Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are you doing today? It's nice to see all of your smiley faces, everybody watching literally from all around the world. I am your host, Jim Masters. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We started over 410, 420 episodes with amazing guests. It's incredible how many episodes we've done, seven days a week live uh, throughout the entire year. And we still are going strong. We were booked with guests. This is uh, what, uh, June? Guests like seven days a week, all the way until I think mid-August already. It's amazing. If you're just joining us for the first time, we welcome you. We have an international audience. They call themselves the Lovities. Yes, they are diehard viewers who love our show. They watch it on our YouTube channel, which is where we're broadcasting it right now. If you get a chance, we would absolutely love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell so you never miss any of our exciting live daily episodes of JMS Live, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Also, if you enjoy this episode, we'd love it if you drop a like. That is that thumbs up sign you see on the YouTube channel right under this episode, right under the video. Uh, click that. YouTube loves when you do that. So do we. And uh, also drop a comment there as well if you enjoy the episode. Do it right on the actual YouTube channel underneath the uh, the video in the episode. We would love that. Uh, we started this show uh, again 410 episodes ago with guests who come in from Broadway and Hollywood, film, television, music, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, authors, you name it, from the United States, Canada, Africa, Asia, Europe. Of oh Boy, we've had people from Ireland and, and Greece and Italy and uh, France this weekend. Uh, we had a guest in from France, um, Australia as well. And wherever you're watching around the world, whether you're watching live or you're watching later on in the archives, we welcome you. It's really cool to have you here with us and hopefully you'll be back again if this is your first time watching. If you're one of our regular lovities, then you know what it's all about. We always have a good time on our show. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series with some of the vibe of the old school talk shows like uh, Johnny Carson, Dick Cavett, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, some of the old school with a modern vibe, modern twist of today, bringing back the lost art of conversation. And of course, we toast you in style. You know what this is? This looks like a very expensive martini, doesn't it? Something that would be maybe $15 in the city. Mm. No, it's uh, it's almost like a raspberry watermelon, watermelon uh, kombucha. You ever have kombucha? Yeah, this is really, really delicious. They say it's healthy and good for you too. I've had it once before and uh, we figured we'd try it tonight in that fancy martini glass. How's everybody doing? We have lots of comments here. Our very special guest joining us. You know her from uh, her amazing television and film work. We're talking about uh, the wonderful Judy Norton uh, who played uh, Mary Ellen Walton in The Waltons, the beloved family drama for the 1970s on CBS. She is here live and direct from California, and she's going to join us in just a second. We were having such a great conversation just before we went live in the air. We welcome you to the Gym Master Show Live. Hello to all the loveties who are watching around the world. Again, if you enjoy the episode, thumbs up on that YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, which is Gym Masters TV, and share it. Share it with everybody you know. Spread the word about our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. We would love that couple of quick comments coming in here. We'll say a hello to some of our viewers that are commenting literally from all around the world, like Jane, who's watching in Sweden where it's late at night. Hello, Jim and love it. It's good to see you, Jane. Irish 43. Hello, Jim and much love, sir. Good to see you, Irish 43. Merlin is here from Canada. She says, welcome, Judy. You're now a love it. I told her about the love it. She says, bring it on. She loves the idea. Joey Lorenzo from New York City is here. Good to see you as well. And Anne is watching from Southern California. All these great viewers called the Lovities. And Wozniak, Jacksonville, Florida is here. Hi, Jim and Lovity friends. Nice to see you as well. Again, everybody from all around the world. Anne in Southern California says, hello, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful Monday. We sure are having a really good Monday. And it's even better with all of you here. Look at all these great comments. It's loaded up. Everybody's talking about storms that are happening and talking about their family and their cousins. Our lovities like to talk amongst themselves too. We've created really a beautiful community here. Merlin says, hello, Jim and all lovities. She's in Ontario, Canada. 
Nice. And uh, Maureen is here in Arizona, a very hot and humid Arizona. Hello, Jim and dear celebrities. I'm looking forward to today show with Judy Norton, but not sure if you could stay. Your AC went out. Oh, and you're in Arizona. The repair dude is on his way. Well, fingers and toes crossed, you get some air conditioner going because I know what a brutal time for it to conk out there, huh? And that heat wave. Gary's in Iowa. Hi, Jim and all lovelies. Good to see you, Gary. Sherry Larson is here. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, Sherry. And uh, hello, Jim and much love, sir, from Irish 43 and everybody that is here. And again, as I mentioned, we are welcoming Judy live and direct from California. And uh, you may remember we had Cami Kotler on also from the Waltons and we had such an incredible conversation with her. And uh, if you remember the Waltons, you remember the role of Mary Ellen and uh, a beloved character on the Waltons, all the characters. Look at this shot right here. This is just one of the shots and we have several really, really cool ones that we're going to share and celebrate uh, with all of you here on our show tonight. Again, we welcome you from wherever you are. There you go, huh? A little split screen there. Um, she's amazing. She's an amazing talent. She's working on some cool projects, you know, as we speak as well. We're also going to, uh, Judy uh, created a video taking us on a tour of the Walton's house. Yes. That's going to be really cool. It's something that she did, and uh, she's sharing it with us tonight on the Gym Master Show Live, which we really appreciate. So you're going to get a chance to see behind the scenes at the actual house, the Walton's house. But first, let's welcome live and direct from California, our very special guest, Judy Norton. Judy, welcome to the show. It's a Hi. pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me, and and thank you to all your wonderful um Lovely. Regular viewers. Such, yeah. such a pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, uh, they've already dubbed you. It, it didn't take long, Judy. They've already dubbed you a lovety. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, she's ready. She's ready. Bring it on. Uh, Joy Lorenzo is in uh, New York in uh, city, and she says, welcome, Judy. And Gary Hi, says... Hey, hi, Gary. <laughs> yeah, hi, Lovity Judy. See, Lovity already. You can't go wrong with Lovity, right? The world could hi. use some more Lovity. Uh, Anne is in Southern California right there. And um, welcome, Judy. So happy to see you today and love that. And thank you very much, Anne. We appreciate that. And Thanks, uh, Anne. <laughs> And another Anne, this is in Jacksonville, Florida, and what's next is welcome, Judy. Still watch the Waltons every week on INSP at 3 and 4 p.m. James Yay. Hall is watching <laughs> from a very hot uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. James, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. Hopefully you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love it. Uh, tomorrow night, Marion Ross from Happy Days is going to be on with her brilliant son, Jim, and you're friends with Jim, right? You know I Jim. I am, yes, Jim Meskimen. Yeah, very, very talented impressionist. He actually, he, he does impressions, but he also sings at, he does singing impressions as well. Yeah. So, yeah, he just recently sent me a link to a video that he did where he is voicing a character in an animated film and he's singing and it's amazing. So you have to ask him about that. Wow, that's incredible. Kurt from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome, Kurt, to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Good to have you here. Zoe D, uh, Zoe from Boston is here. Welcome, Zoe. And uh, Merlin in Ontario says, welcome, Judy. You're now a lovety and uh, so many others. So we'll take a look at some of the others uh, that you guys sprinkle in as we go along here. Mona in Louisiana. Uh, welcome, Jim and Judy, all the lovelies. Welcome to Lovely Hall. Good to see you as well, Mona. Um, how have you been? Obviously, you know, you've kept busy and connected, but how have you done it? How have you stayed connected and creative, collaborative, and sane? Now, when I say the sane part to the guests, they always say, Jim, I'll need to get back to you on that because I'm not sure about the sane part. I'm still working on that. <laughs> But how have you been during, uh, you know, the last year or so that we've all experienced uh, collectively and individually? Uh, well, I think like everybody, there's been, you know, challenges. Uh, my industry, the entertainment industry, pretty well shut down. So uh, like you, you know, you made changes. I did. You know, we, we all, the ent entertainment industry is a business of learning how to pivot. Yes. And how to move with it moves fast and you have to 
continually reinvent yourself. So you you can rest on your laurels for about 15 seconds and then yeah. everyone's moved on. So you kind of have to move on too. So when COVID hit, I was about to, um, I was location scouting. I was in pre-production to direct a film in, in Arizona. Uh, and then everything shut down. Mm. So here we are, you know, a year and whatever, 15, 16 months later. And I don't know what's going to happen with that project. So, but in the meantime, uh, I couldn't just kind of sit around. So I started figuring out what things I could do while we were shut down. I also write. So I continue to pull together some of the scripts that I had been working on. And then I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know if any of you out there have had a chance to watch any of my YouTube, but it actually, you mentioned Cami Kotler. It actually was inspired by Cami because I happened to see on YouTube that Cami had done a segment talking about how some of the at some of the scenes were shot on the Waltons. And I thought, oh, well, that's really cool. I could do yeah. that. I could certainly yeah. talk about, I know the Waltons. I know a lot of what went on behind the scenes. So I decided to do something similar and started talking about things behind the scenes of the Waltons and started this channel. And here we are. It's been almost a year since I started it. Hard and to believe that one really fast, huh? <laughs> growing and, and people seem to be really enjoying it. And so it, that, that's that been fun. And it's given me an opportunity to interact with, yeah. we have amazing fans, um, yeah. and followers and loyal, uh, loyal viewers who've sure. who watched the show now nearly 50 years later. It's amazing, isn't wow. it? Is that when you um, hear that 50 years later, I mean, still a beloved part of Americana, of, uh, you know, television history. Um, how does that, when it's, it's, you must be just overwhelming sometimes because people really have an attachment to the Waltons. Like you say, Joey here in Brooklyn, New York, the Waltons, a great show and everybody, you know, Jane in Sweden welcoming you as a lovely member, James Hall in Albuquerque, loving it. Um, was there ever that thought that this show would take on this love affair it's had all these years when you guys were there doing your thing? When a show starts, you never have any idea. It could, it could be, you know, one season. We were fortunate in that in 1972, when the series started, like we originally did the homecoming, a Christmas TV movie, and that was all it was originally meant to be. And then they, um, the producers were talking with CBS about turning it into a series. And most of us, all the kids were invited to be a part of the series. So very fortunate there. But at that point in time, if a show was picked up for a season, you got a full season. So we did yeah. 26 episodes, which nobody does anymore No, in TV. So we had 26 episodes to find an audience. And we started out in the really low in the ratings, you know, um, and our producers went to bat for the show. They went out on uh, and created a grassroots movement in the heartland of America where they felt the show was really, um, created for middle America, the South, the, you know, just, just the heartland. And so they went out and they took out ads and they, in newspapers and, and just really pitched the show. And over the course of that first season the ratings just climbed and climbed and climbed and by the end of the first season we were like in the top five and we mm. stayed there for years and years and years how did you what, what before the waltons came along in your life judy um what were some of the things you were doing what were some of the things that inspired you to want to perform and go into the arts and entertainment? Were you doing plays in school? What was happening in your life prior to that phone call that came and said, hey, we uh, selected you to play Mary Ellen? Um, I had started in dance classes, little uh, theater classes when I was very young, did some musical reviews as a child, did children's theater with a, a children's theater company. Then I started doing commercials and different little little small roles in film and television. So I'd already been sort of working in in the industry from the time I was about 
five or six. And then when I was about, I think 11, 10 or 11, I started doing theater and I actually joined a theater repertory company. I was the only child in the company. And I did that for two or three years up until I had to leave the company because I was doing the Waltons and I just couldn't schedule wise still be there and attend, you know, rehearsals and, and shows and stuff. So a great training ground. Oh, absolutely. Um, what was, did you have to go through several rounds of auditioning in order to get selected? And what was that process like for you as, you know, a, a young girl and, and now you're here, you are, and you know, you're in these studios and you're, you're you've got all of these incredible talent around and, and the audition process can be daunting for a kid. What was it like for you, Judy? It was intimidating in under a lot of circumstances as a kid because it was always adults in the room. You'd yeah. have a, a whole row of adults sitting there judging you. Yeah. And uh, in this particular case, it was a different sort of audition because there were seven children in the Waltons so when they did the audition for the homecoming, they brought in seven people all together and, and had us read a scene with all of the children together. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the homecoming, when we were cracking walnuts in the barn, that was a scene we auditioned with. And fortunately, Mary Ellen had quite a lot to say in that scene. Yeah. <laughs> she was on a rant about the size of Walton's mountain and how ignorant everybody was. And we're just this tiny speck. And so it really gave me something to sink my teeth into. And I was a real tomboy growing up and have always been, my hobbies have always been sports. And so between dance and sports, I was just always very active and physical. So uh, the character really spoke to me. It was, it was something that, that there was a lot of me in that character so I could relate to it. So going in and doing that scene with the kids gave me the opportunity to focus on that as opposed to the producer and the writer and the casting director and the director and, you know, two or three other people who were all in that audition room. So it went really well. <laughs> and then I was brought <laughs> back a second time and they did the same thing. They took seven of us in and, and we read and then they called me back a third time and they did something that has never happened to me before or since where they brought six of us into the room and all together. And they, and they said, you are the six that we would like to have do the show. Mm. Wow. They literally, I guess they wanted to see us all together. And they basically told us that at the time, um, and it was funny because I was talking to Cammie's mom at one point because Cammie was so little. She was like five or six at the yes, time. Yes, yeah. And I had talked about that casting process on one of my YouTube videos about the homecoming, the casting of the homecoming. And Cammie's mom has been watching my channel. And she <laughs> sent me an email. And she goes, that's so cool. She said, I never really knew that story because Cammie would tell me things, but I never knew if Cammie was understanding properly what was going on. <laughs> so none of our parents were in the room. So... She thought maybe Cammy misunderstood it, or yes. it's just a very unusual thing for them to do. <laughs> so we've been learning from each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is funny. Did um, did everybody click right away? Uh, what was that like? Because you know, when you bring a a bunch of people together, especially the kids of the varying ages and backgrounds, uh, what was that like? Did you guys sort of form friendships early? Because you know, when you watch the series, um, so well written, so well uh, produced, ton tender, moving, riveting stories, um, dramatic, sometimes comedic, loving. Uh, you really, really felt that the characters you were watching, which again is the, the claim to successful acting, and writing and producing and just the execution from top to bottom, um, it really does feel like they are the Waltons, like this family is real. And I'm sure, you know, as a kid acting as in the role of Mary Ellen, when you would see people on the streets and they would 
assume you're that character, which can be kind of interesting, especially when you're a kid. But what was it like being on set with the other kids? Did everybody sort of bond right away, like a family? We had five weeks of filming for the homecoming. So over the course of that five weeks, we really did bond. Um, there was a fair bit of age range between the kids, Cami being the youngest at about five or six. And then Richard Thomas was, although he was one of the kids because he was the star of the show, he was never really classified as one of the kids. So when I refer to the kids, I refer to, you know, Jason and Mary Ellen and, and Ben and Aaron and Elizabeth and Jim Bob. And um, so we were the kids. And so John Walmsley, who played Jason, was the oldest of the kids at 15. And then the rest of us were sort of in between six and 15. So about a 10 year range. So at 13, which is what I was when we did the homecoming, I wouldn't say, I mean, I bonded differently with Cammy because she was little and she was cute, but you deal with a six-year-old differently than I dealt with, say, Eric Scott, who was the same age as me, or John Walmsley, who was only three years older than me, or two years older than me. Uh, so we bonded differently and had a different relationship at that point, but we certainly all got very close and we we were like brothers and sisters. I mean, even from then we'd argue when we, you know, we disagreed on things, but it was all still like we were one unit. We just, it just happened. It was just like magic, you know, that intangible thing that you can't guarantee is going to happen, even if you do screen tests and all kinds of things. Uh, but then as the series went on, it just, it just grew from there. And same thing that like a real family, you don't, you can disagree with a family member. You can be like, I'm not speaking to that person today but they're still part of your family and you still love them. So there was never any breaks in the family that we didn't have complete confidence would resolve. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like working with, uh, you know, Ralph Waite and my, Michael Leonard and, and the other uh, adult characters, were they, were they parental? Were they watching over? Were they guiding you guys like loving parents would be? What was that atmosphere like? Because again, for the viewers, everything just seemed so seamless and was so beautifully uh, presented as if you guys are related and it's a real family. What was it like working with the veteran actors and actresses who were playing you know, your parents, your grandparents, and, and the others that came through? I think I felt more of the mentoring aspect from like Ellen Corby. Um, and then Will Gear was, was like that also at, at times on different subjects. Um, Michael and Ralph, that was a different sort of relationship. I think I've heard them both say that they felt, they felt parental to us but I wouldn't say that I felt parental, you know, I didn't feel that from them particularly, not that I couldn't talk to them, but it was just, it was just different. I think some of that grew more later um, in an odd way. As I became more of an adult, my relationship with them changed and I had more sort of adult conversations with them. Then I didn't have a lot of conversations with them when I was still a kid, they tended to, yeah, I mean, we interacted on the set and stuff like that, but I, it's not like I remember sitting down and talking to Michael or Ralph, like I need parental advice. I was already a teenager. I thought I knew it all. So <laughs> I wasn't necessarily going to ask anybody <laughs> for advice. You know how teenagers are. I Dad, was like, can I, I have the I was car in my keys? Own world. <laughs> things, things were happening. Like people will tell me about things. I'm like, really? Where was I? And I was just <laughs> oblivious. I was totally you know, self-absorbed <laughs> <laughs> in my own little bubble. <laughs> I missed but, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a cool photo here. Cutie patootie, as they say. When uh, was this? Oh, I'd say probably, you know, seven or eight there. Um, that was just, you know, it was a photo shoot that I did for my probably, you know, headshot we yeah. used to do these composite shots where you'd have a head shot on the front and then you'd have like three or four different shots on the back that showed different sorts of characters and things. And 
And so that, that looks like the, those he shoes. loves me, he loves me not. Uh, <laughs> plucking the daisy, plucking the daisies there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you remember the very first scene that you were in that what your scene was? Because uh, that obviously must really be near and dear to your heart. Um, no, <laughs> I don't remember what it was. It might have been, we might have shot that walnut cracking scene first, uh, the one that we auditioned with, but I, I don't totally remember. I mean, we're talking October 1971, so it's been a minute or two, <laughs> which is amazing since I'm still only 39, you know. That's exactly right. Years later and, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Merlin, Ontario, Canada asks, um, did you have schooling during filming? Were the kids being schooled? Was there tutors on set? Or how'd that work as far as the education for you guys while filming the Waltons? Right. Um, during the school year, um, we did have tutors. Uh, it is a requirement. Uh, and so when we were younger, when there were six of us still in school, we had two teachers. One handled the older grades, so that would have been me and Eric and John, who played Mary Ellen, Ben, and Jason, because we were the three oldest. And then the three younger ones, Mary, David, and Cammie, who played Ben, I mean, Aaron, Elizabeth, and Jim Bob, they had a teacher for the younger grades. So we were required to do three hours of school a day. So in between scenes, we'd go back into, we had a trailer that was set up as our schoolroom. And we would go into there and do work on our various different subjects. At the beginning of a school year, I would go to my, I was in high school by the time the um, series started. I would go to my high school and I'd go, okay, what are my mandatory subjects? What book are they going to be using? And I would get that stuff from my school. And then I would take it to the studio and I would cover those various different subjects. The teachers were amazing. I, you know, I got a lot of, I got complete one-on-one -on -one attention with any subject I needed it within, you know, because there was nobody else in my grade. So it was just me. Right. Uh, so it was, it was fabulous. If you had a really busy day on set, you might barely get any time in, in the schoolroom. They weren't allowed to send us home with homework. Um, but it just meant that on a day when you had less work, you would bank school time. So instead of doing just three hours, you might do an extra hour. So we would bank time so that then um, on days when you were really your, your character had a heavy storyline and you were on set all the time that you'd make up that time. Are there particular episodes along the way that are some of your own personal favorites, uh, Judy? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really hard to pick. There isn't a single one, but some of the ones as I've been looking back at episodes to do these segments that's the ones that stand out for me are things like the Easter story yeah. when um, Olivia had polio and I had a really fun subplot where I am going to go to the school dance with GW, my, my wow. young boyfriend, and he can't dance. And I teach him to dance up on the mountain in the snow and ice and, and, but I can't dance. So John boy teaches me to dance. And <laughs> it was, it was really sweet. And then, um, you know, it was a two hour special. So lovely story. Um, that one, the, um, the firestorm, which I felt was a very important episode. Um, John Ritter, who played our minister for several years, amazing, amazingly talented actor who went, could do brilliant, heartbreaking drama and turn around and do, you know, rolling out of your chair comedy. Yeah. Uh, we were so, so fortunate to have John Ritter with us for so many years on our show. But he, when early on, when he was the minister and, and John Boy was running his newspaper and he wanted to print excerpts from Mein Kampf so that people would be aware of what the Germans, what was happening with Hitler in Germany. And there's a huge uproar in town and there's a big um, climactic scene around a fire where they're going to burn all these books. And it's just the, it's just an intense scene and such an important message. You know, so many of the things that we did episodes about, about back then, if you look at today and our society today are so relevant in their own way today that I think that's part of the magic of the show is these messages, even though they're historic, unfortunately, there's aspects of history repeating itself. 
So the firestorm is um, is one that I always remember also. And then the house burning down, and then you know that was you and I were talking <laughs> that about that. Intense. That that uh, yeah, I remember, and, and that uh, that that really knocked everybody for a loop. And I remember people talking about it, and uh, of all ages, when the house, the Walton's house, actually burns down, and uh, you know, what was that like for you guys? I would I would imagine. You know, it is scripted television, but still, there must have been so much emotion involved, uh, especially being, you know, younger, and here you are, and uh, there's that storyline being so vivid and so riveting and so emotional that the house, you know, goes up in flames. It was quite something to film. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it was so much that I felt emotional about the house burning down because I knew it wasn't really burning down. Uh, and we, the way the house was shot, we had the exterior set and then we had a soundstage where we shot all of the interior stuff. Um, I remember on the interior sets that they, they put gas jets along the bottom of like the baseboards in the, like in the hallway up where the bedrooms were. And then they had, then they turned them on and they like shot flames up the side walls as we ran through this hallway. So that was a little daunting. It's like, I am running by this in this fairly narrow hallway past live flames, you know, in, in a flannel nightgown, <laughs> you know, with long hair. No. Um, now they had, they had fireproof the supposedly our, our night clothes, but so things like that were like, Oh shoot, here we go. There's yeah. the fire. Yeah. Um, so those things were just, got your adrenaline going. Um, so we had a number of those things in the exterior. That one was kind of fascinating. We shot on a Friday night. We shot late, which we pretty much never did. And there were all these spectators, like a whole bunch of people heard that they were going to set the Walton house on fire and they showed up to watch. So we worked late. The fire crew was there. Cause anytime you work with fire, there have to be, you know, fire safety people on set. And so they had like all these spectators kind of behind you know, not really a barricade, but they, you know, there was a, a, a an area they couldn't move past. And, um, and then they were, they were setting flames. The house isn't a full house. So they could put flames shooting up behind where you couldn't see that the house wasn't actually there. The front windows, they had put these metal, big metal barricades behind them. And I remember at one point I was like, as a character throwing things out the window the, of the real exterior of the set. And this window next to me exploded out because mm -hmm. they set, you know, set it on to, to blow out like the fire had blown out that window. And it's like, I'm out there going, Oh, ah! you know, it's like, <laughs> that moment was a little real, like, ah, they're blowing yeah. up things next to me. Um, but the really emotional part was when we all then were outside and we were like watching yeah. and like Ralph, John Walton goes running back inside because they can't find John boy and they can't find Aaron. So then it was like, Oh my goodness, you know, our father is running into this burning building and, you know, my brother and my sister are in there. And um, I think we just, you know, in the way in which as actors, you, you build the reality of something. And I think some of the younger ones felt like it really was real to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I was old enough to know, but you, you kind of, you feed off each other's emotions uh, whatever those emotions are, whether it's excitement, anger, you know, in this case, the fear and, and you yeah. just, you just roll with it. And, and that's what we kind of all did. And so it, it felt very real in that moment that we were honestly worried about John Boy and Aaron and our father who were in this, bur this burning building. So it was, yeah. you know, it was quite something. It was, it was fun and exciting in some ways. And, and right. yet, you know, a little yeah. nerve wracking in others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, there was another time on the Waltons that was very important, especially for for your character. Oh, yes, getting married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting married. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Tell us about that. That was, uh, of course, quite a build up and uh, quite a storyline as well. And uh, what was that like uh, for for Mary Ellen and for Judy? Um. Well, I was only 18. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I thought it was a really lovely story. It was a two-part episode. Uh, wow. And 
it was so it was a fun script, a fun episode. Uh, Tom Bauer, who played Kurt, had actually done an episode in an earlier season, The Wing Walker, where he played a stunt pilot. And but I didn't really work with him particularly on that episode. I didn't really have scenes with him. Ah, Richard Gilliland. Oh, very nice, sad. Huh? Nice. Yeah, we lost him recently. So I know. yeah. I know. Um, but uh, yeah, so I didn't I didn't know Kurt very you know Tom very well, and I think that was one of the first scenes we we shot was we went up on location to Fraser Park, and we shot the wedding. So it was like, hi, how are you? Let's go get married. You know, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and that happens with filming a lot of times because we don't shoot in order. So all of a sudden you know, we're shooting, we're getting married before we've really had the courtship. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of like being a mail order bride, you know, it's like, oh, hello. <laughs> and then we went up, so we went up onto the mountain and we, and we shot the wedding. And then at some point back at the studio, when we were shooting the other scenes, yeah. one day it, it word came down that they forgot to get these close ups. this shot that you have right there. Yeah was not shot in Fraser Park. Ah. That was shot on the back lot of the studio. I am standing on about an eight foot ladder. With a green screen behind you? No, with trees. They put us up on these tall ladders so that they could ah. shoot up a bit and yeah. have like trees behind us that you couldn't totally identify what they were, but those Ooh. are not pine trees behind us, <laughs> which is what was up on the mountain which where was, we actually shot. Which and then they put these- these On the like, mountain, yeah. Yeah, no, that was, that was there. So you see those, those are pine trees. But on the other shot, it's you can't really tell what that is, but those are leafier trees. Wow. Yeah. So they did this and they got these tight close ups because they didn't, they hadn't gotten close ups of us saying, I do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so they had to, they, they had to recreate this recreate somehow in the last it. shot. And, and then they put these like, they used to have these things called nine lights. I don't know if they still have them or not, but it was like a square with nine lights on it. And they were intense, they were hot and they were blinding. And so mostly what I remember about those I do's, it was trying not to blink and not to have my eyes water because those were like right, two banks of them like right on me. And and then trying to, you know, like act the emotion of the moment <laughs> just in the most uncomfortable of circumstances. And that's that's the reality of acting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> All the soap opera actors and actresses say the same thing about the romantic love scenes too. Yeah. They shoot them sometimes at seven o'clock in the morning and it's freezing in the studio and it's nothing like that warm hot toddy in the fireplace and everything that you see building up to it. They're like frigid. And yeah. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was gonna say, we say that often uh, if uh, the, viewers uh, only knew what goes on behind the scenes to pull it all together. Uh, it's a lot of work and a lot of toil and a lot of unusual uh, circumstances. Uh, what would be another one that stands out for you that was uh, kind of like that, where it was a little unusual or something, or there was just a lot of effort had to really go into it to pull that off? Oh gosh, you know, this is where they start kind of blurring together. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there were, there were odds and ends of like random scenes will stick out to me. Like when they were, I don't particularly like heights, despite the fact that I've done skydiving and wing walking and flying trapeze and things like that, but I'm not <laughs> often fond of standing on the top of buildings. Yeah. Um, and there was an, there were a couple of episodes. Um, one was um, the carnival where uh, we, uh, a group of circus performers came and stayed on the mountain for a few nights. And there's a point where I go and I see the tightrope walker and, and I decide that, you know, I think that's really, I wanna be a tightrope walker. And she gives me one of her old costumes. And so I go and I get up on top of the barn and I start, you know, with an umbrella and pretend, and you know, like I'm walking along the, 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 the peak of the barn. Well, that section, when you see the long shot of supposedly me up there was a stunt double. Yeah. And, and they had at the peak of the um, of the um, roof, they had then built a platform that was flat that you couldn't see. So you could see the peak, but you couldn't see that there was like a, a fairly wide platform up there. So it was level. So she wasn't really walking on the peak on just the point of it. So 
she shot that. Then when they went to do the close-up, again, sometimes it's like, it's it's crazy. So the, uh, back to the ladders, they stuck the teeter-totter from our front yard on the Waltons <laughs> the, up between two tall ladders. Well, that teeter-totter was only about a foot wide. Yeah. And they had me between these like six foot ladders walking back and forth on this teeter-totter. I'm like, this is worse than being on the roof of the house. <laughs> I don't know that it's any safer. I could still fall off and hurt myself. So but sometimes it was it was kind of fascinating the things that they would consider safe or dangerous. You know. Yeah. Bert Ward was on the show, you know, Robin from Batman mm -hmm. and Robin, and he said some similar crazy things that happened on set and and how dangerous it was actually coming down that bat pole. And, oh, you know, it wasn't just a convenient pole. It was a big drop and just wow. and some of the crazy things that they were asked to do while in the Batmobile at high speed and jump out of the cars and all this kind of, and, and just thought nothing, they thought nothing of it because it was part of the storyline or whatever it may be. <laughs> it's, it's what you did. I, I was watching an episode the other day that I was doing a commentary on and we were all, all the cast, pretty much was in the back of the truck, the old green truck. Yeah. And we're like standing up in the back of the truck or someone's sitting up on the tailgate as it's driving. You know, we're just all sitting on the edges of the truck and standing in the back and... as it's going down the road. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no, no safety harnesses, no nothing. We're just, <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, so it was, it was, a, it was a different, I don't know whether they'd still do that now. I think you know, there's more safety precautions on some yeah. things, but in other cases, I think it's still, you know, yeah. there's things that just happen. And as an actor, you kind of, you know, and sometimes it's not even dangerous, but like actors are always being asked to get in cold water. Yes. You know, and it's like, I don't like cold water. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me get in the cold water. You know, Or you look at these things that have like all these underwater sequences. And I always think I haven't had to do one, but I'm like, oh my goodness, they're, they are underwater, you yeah. know? And sometimes when they're supposed to be trapped in something and I find myself going, well, how easy is it for them to get out of that? How would I feel? Would I get claustrophobic? Yeah. <laughs> so these things just, you know, it just, yeah, they're, they're like, those are crazy. That's funny. Yeah. My, my phone is ringing. My phone never rings. <laughs> Nobody has this phone number. It's somebody, it, it's, somebody it's, it's one of the loverdies who got my number. The, they're calling. The it. It's they probably call. it's not a call in it, show, people. <laughs> it's probably a producer that's calling you about a uh, gig where you have to uh, go underwater. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to test me. How badly do you want gonna, this job? Would you be going, willing to? Judy, we saw you on the Gym Master Show live, and we heard that you love those <laughs> underwater scenes. Yeah. Well, I do know that you do like the water. I, I mean, you probably don't want to be under it, but and you don't really like the heights. However, uh, I do know that you did have a stint where you got an opportunity to be high above the water while you're sailing on the water on the love boat. Ah. <laughs> yes. What was that like? I... I you know, always wanted to do an episode of The Love Boat. I mean, I love those shows, Love Boat, Fantasy Island. And, um, you know, working on any other show was always a blast because, I mean, our show, I, I love doing our show. And there was a comfort level to being on our set. It was our family and, and guests came to our show. Uh, and you and I, I've heard people, for the most part, say that they they did find our set really welcoming and comfortable and that we made everybody feel good being there. I hope that's true. We tried to. Uh, and, you know, so it was, but it was, it was kind of familiar. So when I got to go do another show, it was exciting because it was something different. Uh, I did not get to go sail, you know, for real. We did it at, uh, I think, 20th Century Fox Studios. So the inside, the indoor uh, sets of, of the, um, the love boat, but uh, yeah, I had I had a lot of fun, and uh, the thing I remember change. most about that was that I had this one line that I had to. Pr certain lines are tongue twisters. Yeah, <laughs> and I had to say my shampoo is made by our Synthico chemical subsidiary. Bravo, bravo! Thank you. All I mean, obviously, later, all these still... years later, I still remember because <laughs> I had to practice that over and over and over. Like some of the doctor lingo I had to say on the Waltons, and you 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 have to yeah. say it like. You say it all the time. Right. And like, you know what you're talking about. Uh, the, the amount of medical stuff I had to look the up jargon. and research so I knew what, what I was talking about. 
you know, it was like an education, you know, in itself. <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. And you got a chance to work with the crew and everybody yeah. there. And they were uh, wonderful, that, that, those guys. And I did game shows with a lot of those, you know, Ted Lange and, and oh, um, yeah. Craig Grandy and Gavin McLeod. And, you know, so. Yeah. Who we just yeah. lost recently. Yeah. Uh, do you remember some of the game shows you were on? Yeah. I Jim love do, doing games. Do do match password game? plus. Ma I, I never did match game. I did password, password plus, uh, $25,000 pyramid, cross with celebrity charades, you know? <laughs> so there were, there were a few of them. And, um, I don't know. I have, I, I have a mind that like works like that sometimes. So some of those shows I did well at, and so then there were others well. that I was like terrible at. And I'm like, Oh, I won't be invited back to that one. <laughs> There was well, one up, that was shot up in Canada, so I'd never seen it, and I didn't get to watch it in practice. And it had to do with puns. I don't think in puns. Oh yeah. And I was just, I was just terrible. You know, I'm like, I will not be back. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Well, see, it just shows that you're a real trooper. You really, you know, you'll you'll try whatever you know they need, and you give it 110. Um, percent I'm really competitive, so. You know, when I'm, if I'm doing that or when I did things like Battle of the Network Stars or, um, yes, of the stars yes. like that, I always, you know, I was just super competitive. <laughs> and even got your own card. Yep. Oh, I do. Oh, wow. That's look so that. cool. Yeah. I look at that. that. Judy Norton Taylor, Batter, yes, Battle of the Network me, Stars. Obviously. Yes. I was wet. <laughs> yeah. You. <laughs> I went in. <laughs> you went in, uh, but you were very, uh, very athletic, right? Yeah. And yeah, and uh, you really, you know. I had battle scars. I broke a finger on Battle of the Network Stars. I sprained an ankle. Did um, you really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here's another shot. Yeah, that, football. That See, my fingers are taped together there. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, that was after I broke my finger. <laughs> and you're still you're still going yeah yeah remember that battle of the network stars all the different stars from all the shows in the networks yeah. oh uh, and that one i what i would do is because I, I i watched the show and because i'm competitive and and i would i always thought that so much of the time the female athletes you know that was what what i felt like made or break broke a team because if they had strong feet, because the guys were could match up pretty well to some degree. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the women, you know, who were stronger female athletes could really help on some of the events. And I knew that that was really true in the football. So I'd like never played football. I'd never. So I took a football to work at the studio and I had all the guys on the crew, you know, between I'm like, throw, throw this to me. I don't have to be able to throw, but I have to be able to catch. So I'd make, I'd make guys on the crew <laughs> throw me the football and, and help me practice so that I could learn how to catch the football. So, and, and, and it really helped. I, um, I ended up, you know, I ended up doing, doing well enough in the football to, to really help the team, which made me feel good. Now, when you were doing that, uh, the Battle of the Network Stars, how how long are you there? Is it a couple of days? Is it a weekend? How long is it? It's a the, weekend. We it is a weekend. We were at yeah. University in Malibu, California. That's, so and that's, we, it would yeah. be a Saturday and Sunday, all day, long days. And yeah. usually at the beginning of the weekend, for people who hadn't done battle, you kind of come and go, oh, this is going to be fun. And, you yeah. know, very shortly into it, everyone's out for blood. It gets like really, <laughs> really competitive. <laughs> So, yeah. And then some of the guys on the team, like I did three battles with um, Greg Harrison. Oh, yeah. Who's also really competitive and a really good athlete. So the two of us on a team together, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then Tom Selleck, I did a couple with and he's, you know, he's a heck of an athlete. And I would tell people my Tom Selleck story. Um, I mean, this was when he was doing Magnum PI and, you know, was like the sort of, you know. Oh yeah, he was the it guy, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and a really, you know, really nice guy, really, you know, I, I really um, enjoyed working with him. And meeting yeah, what him. a great run he's really. had on Blue Bloods on CBS yeah. now, huh? Another, he, um, another great series. He was the captain of our team um, one time, and when I sprained my ankle on the obstacle course, and I had, you know, I finished, I, I sprained it coming off of the over the, the wall. And then I had to go through the water and, and, and race to the end. And when I find, when I crossed the finish line, 
I sort of like laid down because then the adrenaline from the ankle you know, was where, and I was like laying on the ground, you know, trying to figure out how bad the ankle was, you know, yeah. and Howard Cosell's trying to interview me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laying on the ground. Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> and Tom Selleck came over and I said, I know I was really in pain because it wasn't until I watched the show when it aired that I realized that Tom Selleck carried me off of the obstacle course field. And I was in too much pain to recognize and appreciate and enjoy the moment. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> it's like, oh no. <laughs> Wait. I had to sprain it now. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, it's, hey, I got I got carried by but Tom so much, but I didn't get to enjoy it. <laughs> in style, right? <laughs> yeah. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> got some other really, really cool shots here. This is a, from obviously the the show itself. Yeah, that was from the first episode that we um, filmed, The Hunt. It was not the first episode that aired, but it was the first one we shot. And um, I am trying to decide whether I have some money, whether I'm going to buy that catcher's mitt or um, because I want to play catch with GW or whether I'm going to buy that dress because Martha Rose Coverdale, my nemesis, is um, making eyes at it and making eyes at my boyfriend. And um, so I'm trying to decide which is my better bet to um, to get the boy. <laughs> I tried the dress. I decided I looked stupid in it until yeah. I went back for the catcher's mitt. <laughs> Here's another shot. Ah, that is from a film of mine, Inclusion Criteria. Oh, yes. Actually, we retitled it Nowhere to Hide. Um, it's a psychological thriller and um, that I wrote and starred in. And uh, it's um, available on uh, on DVD and also on streaming um, on on some some channels. So yeah. super super cool. That was a, that was a fun project. We an indie film. We shot it in a couple of weeks and nice. Very different sort of character. Absolutely, I like this shot too. too. Yeah, that's also from that from that that's movie nice. where we created fake snow snow in in the living room. <laughs> That is nice. That's really, really cool. And do you guys, you guys still get together? Yes, there we are. That is at um, the Will Gear Theatricum Botanicum in Topanga Canyon. It's a theater. Oh, and that I is um, right in the center there with the straw hat on is Will's yeah. daughter, Ellen Gear. Um, I was and on a TV shoot in LA and I had the rental car and I did that drive from the Topanga Canyon <laughs> Overlook to mm -hmm. Malibu, uh, twisty, turny, turny and windy, but how beautiful that area of Topanga Canyon. Yeah. What a yeah. great area there. It really is. And he built this outdoor theater that's just stunning. And it's been there for like 50, 60, 70 years. I think he built it and created it in the fifties when he was blacklisted and, um, you know, just like, started putting on his own shows and things and his, his yeah. daughters, his family, you know, grandkids, the, you know, are still involved, still run it. Um, and it's just, it's literally carved into the, the side of the Hills and stuff like that. And, and it's, it's just amongst the trees and, you know, they put on these plays that just utilize the whole beautiful environment there. Really, really fantastic. Here's another uh, photo when we did our research that I know is near and dear to your heart. And maybe you um, can uh, share with the audience who this special man is with you. Oh, Earl Hamner, who yeah. created the Waltons. We would call him Uncle Earl. Yeah. Um, and this was, um, there was a, a documentary that was done about his, his life, Earl Hamner, storyteller and actors and whatnot from so many shows that he wrote and was involved with uh, did interviews because, you know, to work with Earl was to love Earl. He was such an amazing writer. His sensibilities as, as a writer uh, were just so beautiful. So this was, we were paying tribute at a screening and yeah. yeah. And another wonderful shot we came across here. Oh, with Ralph Waite. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. That was one of the last thing, things we did together was a, a photo shoot for entertainment weekly. They were doing re, you know, sh shoots for reunion, uh, gathering cast together to do these photo shoots. And 
I, I didn't have particularly have shots with some of the cast members because you work with them all the time. So you don't think, oh, take a picture with me. Yeah. Um, and so that for that shoot, I just was like grabbing, grabbing shots. And I'm so glad I got this one. It's not um, a good shot of either of us, but I'm glad I have it. <laughs> but there's a warmth there. It's like, yeah, yeah. It didn't have to be like uh, perfect or scripted. It's just, you know mutual admiration and respect and love and and that's what it's all about it's another yeah. great one here tell yeah. us about uh i see cammy and michael uh Leonard and, and and my and mary mcdonough and john wamsley and that was john's um former wife lisa harrison who played his wife tony on the series for um a, you know a short while towards the end of the series i believe this was in germany mm. no no it's not um because I don't think Lisa was in Germany. Um, yeah, I have no idea where that was, but yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you're all together. Yeah, yeah, we we do a lot of a lot of events together over the years. This now you talk about heights uh, and not really enjoying the heights or enjoying uh, the underwater type stuff. And I believe at some point, I don't know if this was Walton's or not. Um, but I think you were sort of saved as you were up on the heights. <laughs> <laughs> that is the movie Hotel, the That's original right. movie from the you know late 1960s. Um, and the climactic scene when the elevator drops and they have to rescue everyone out of the elevator. And that is Rod Taylor, um, who has just pulled me up out of this elevator and is um, handing me off to be put into another elevator. So yeah, one of, of my early rescues. <laughs> and, and how what are you six there or <laughs> probably about eight, eight or nine? About eight or nine, I would say. Mm, here's another great shot. Ah, and you know who I'm with there? Who are you with there? I that was trying Faith, to make it out. Faith Prince. Oh yeah. That was um with Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. Um, it was my first um equity union musical that I did after the Waltons. It was right after the Waltons. And um, I'd always wanted to do musical theater. And so I got to um, do the lead in a production of Cinderella with the Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera and Faith Prince played one of my stepsisters and we we became good friends and yeah. That is cool. There's another shot here. Yep, that's also from Cinderella. Mm. That's a lovely actor singer named Keith Rice. Mm. Did he stay in the uh, the industry? Um, I I think he he did do um he did do some you know some theater and stuff like that. Um, I I lost track of him, so yeah. I'm not sure um, yeah. you know, where where he went from there. But just you know one of those. I I got to work with some just amazingly talented mm -hmm. singers and stuff, and he was he was one of them. He had just the most beautiful voice. <laughs> Great shot here, Peter sure. Fox. Yeah, you know, who played um our last um the last reverend that we had on the, on the series, you know? Um, yeah. That's I have no idea what, whether that was in a scene or probably, it looks like it was probably between takes. Yeah. I'm not sure when you found that. I love that shot. I'll have yeah. to find that. You'll have to send it to me. <laughs> yeah. That's a great shot. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. That is with Bill Daly. Um, oh yeah. 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 Roger Healy from I Dream of Genie. Yes. On the Bob yes. Newhart show. And yeah, he was an amazing character actor, wasn't he? Yeah, that was from a production of I Ought to Be in Pictures That's that right. he and I did in Amarillo, Texas. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had to do my best, uh, you know, sort of Brooklyn accent in the middle of Texas, which is <laughs> 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 to hang on to that accent in the middle of. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Cabaret too. I mean, you're you're a, a wonderful performer as much as you are an actress and mm -hmm. theater director. Um, you love singing, and I know there's CDs out. And here's a great shot. Yeah, that was yeah from a cabaret concert that I did. The person you can't see standing off screen is um, Maxine Nightingale. I don't know if you're familiar with Maxine, but sure, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful singer. Yeah, we did we did a show together. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. You enjoy that. Here's another. <laughs> yep, that's from a, a, a theater in um, in L.A. I was yeah, I did a little country set. <laughs> <laughs> you and here's another great shot too. Mm. Yeah, 
are is there ever a pull between the acting and the singing are you an actor that sings or a singer who's an actress uh, what what uh, really deeply and then and of course over the years that could have evolved yeah you know, but uh with the acting being there first but is there one that pulls at your heart more that it's that's been quite an evolution because um Early on when I was a kid, I, I loved to sing in the first musical production I did as, as a kid, children's theater was a production of Cinderella, but it wasn't the Rodgers and Hammerstein version. It was some children's one. And, and I remember auditioning. For, I wanted to play Cinderella. I was too young for it, but I wanted to play it. And I didn't get it. I didn't get it, but I, and I didn't understand why. And then I always loved to sing. And when I was about 16, I recorded myself with my little cassette tape one day and I played it back and I was horrified because I was so bad. And when I played it back, I could hear how bad my pitch was. And I was just so upset because I couldn't hear it when I was singing. Like my ear wasn't trained enough to be able to hear that I was out of tune. So at 16, I started taking voice lessons because I so wanted to sing and I wasn't any good. <laughs> so I spent <laughs> years and years and years, you know, studying singing um, yeah. because I really wanted to to do musical theater. So that Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera production was my first opportunity. And I didn't, you know, I sort of, I was taking singing lessons because, for me, because I wanted to, I thought if, if I only sing in my garage, I'm, you yeah. know, I, I did it for me. So to be hired to do a professional show was such a boost to me. I went, oh my goodness, you know, somebody actually would pay me to do this. Somebody would pay me to professionally. And so then I really got busy. It was like, okay, now, now that I know that there's potential here. Right. And so, it, so for years and years, I was sort of like, well, I'm an actor who sings because I didn't feel confident enough as a singer to, to want to say I'm a singer. I was like, oh, I can hide behind the actor thing. So if I make a mistake as a singer, it'll be okay. But I thought right. I had to be perfect if I was just a singer. And then um, I did a lot of work down in Texas for um, with Texas Family Musicals. And during that time, I, I directed for them and I did productions as, you know, I did Hello Dolly for them a number of times and some other musicals and stuff. And, and then one time um, the producer asked me to be part of a concert they were doing. And it was like Judy Garland and friends. And he wanted me to be one of Judy Garland's friends. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a concert. And that was one of the first sort of straight up concert shows I did. And he was like, you're really good at this. You should do more of it. And so he kept inviting me back to create different shows. And so I did a lot of concert work for him. And that was really when I started getting the confidence to be able to say, I'm a singer, right. you know, without having to feel like I had to hide behind, you know, being an actor. So now I still love both. I, I always, you know, if I haven't been doing one for a while and I get a chance to do it, I love it. And I'm like, oh, why don't I do this more? You know, it's kind of like the difference between writing or directing or acting or being on stage or being on, on television or film. They're all different in their own way and, and that I, I love all of them, you know? So it would be hard for me to decide if someone said I had to pick just one. That I don't is, know if you could uh, now. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, tell us about this. That was, um, I, I kept wanting to do a CD. Um, I had a demo, you know, I finally had done a demo CD at one point. Um, and then people kept, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, do you have a CD? And I do these concerts and they're like, do you have a CD I could buy? And, yeah. and I could never figure out what I wanted it was like such a big decision to decide what songs would I right. put on CD, <laughs> but I could never decide. And so finally I was doing a live concert and I thought, well, I'll record that and we'll see how it turns out. Maybe I'll turn that into a live CD recording. And so that's what I did. So this Reflections was a concert that I did in, in LA a number of years back. And then we just mastered it into, into a you know CD. So that is available. Um, through my website, if people want hard copies, I personalize them. Oh, and fantastic. if they want a digital copy, it's available like Amazon, iTunes. You can get just the individual selections. And it's it's Broadway and Great American Songbook, you know, standards, that type of thing. And I tell little stories, you know, about the songs or about my life as well. Got another great photo here, too. Ah, yes. 
This was yeah. a little web series I created. That's um, me with um, actor, wonderful actor David Pebsner. And it's sort of um, a friend of mine had had created this concept. She's an or a professional organizer. And so oh, she yeah. had this idea for this show called The Disorganized Zone, you know, where mm -hmm. it had a little sort of magical element where people just have trouble with some element of their life that just isn't organized. And, and I'm like this organizer. And so I kind of come in and with a touch of magic somehow help them sort out their life. And it was just a little, we did, it was an experimental project. Um, and we shot about seven episodes and, and it got put into a little DVD again, available, you know, on Amazon, if people are interested, you can watch the episodes or get the DVD. Um, it's a silly little thing. It's, it's fun. It's not, okay. I wouldn't say the production value is great. Just disclaimer. I was <laughs> experimenting with, you know, just sometimes like kind of with COVID just wanting to get something done, wanting okay. to try something, wanting to, you know, sometimes if you wait to get it all right, you never do it. So um, exactly right. I've yeah. had conversations on the show about that. Sometimes you have to learn. Uh, one, one of my most difficult things is putting together a demo reel because mm -hmm. I'm always like, how am I going to, you know, all these years and all this material and all this footage, how am I going to narrow this thing down to like three minutes? I mean, and what am I going to put first? Do I put the best stuff first or do I yes. weld them, weld them at the end? And put then it first because they may not watch the whole thing. They'll do like 30 seconds and or yeah. if even if that. They don't, if the first 30 seconds doesn't grab them, they won't watch the rest. So they'll miss the best. And, but then sometimes I've gotten into the habit, which is a bad one, and I've learned not to do it anymore, is I'll say, you know what? Even though I've got all these years of all this footage and all these shows, and projects, productions, and all of this, I'll wait because that next thing I'm working on, that's going to be the one that I'm going to want to put on the reel. And you could go through that cycle forever. <laughs> yeah. I talked with um, a, a singer songwriter friend of mine about that one time when I was trying to decide about the CD he goes, you know what the best CD is the one you're going to do next, you know, no matter what you, it's always going to be the next project. That's, that's going to be, you know, right. so there's points where you just do yeah, it. You know, you do don't, it. if you're so, and, and I, I think, I try not to get too hung up in perfectionism because I think that can be, it can be something that just stops you again. It, it, it blocks you from doing something, you know, I mean, all you can do at any given time is the best you can do given the resources you have and what you know in that moment. So you would expect that each thing you do would be better. And, you know, when you're making things, the more budget you have, the more options you have, but you've seen huge multi, multi-million dollar things that haven't been great. And then you've seen little indie things that have been brilliant. So it's sort of like, go tell a story, you know, tell the best story you can tell, whether it's through music or through video. And, you know, that's kind of how with some of these little experimental projects. And I wanted to do more directing. Um, I'd done so much theater directing that I wanted to sort of play around with doing some more directing for uh, on camera. And so this organized, disorganized zone was kind of like my school project, you know, <laughs> it's right. like something, you know, and it's like, well, we've got it together. We'll throw it out there and <laughs> people might enjoy it. You know, maybe they will, maybe they won't, you know, <laughs> speaking of disorganized zone, how many closets uh, have you cleaned during the uh, craziness of the last 12, 13 months? Oh, well, I, I, so much so that I moved. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I totally cleaned all the closets. I moved in. in and did you in add more closets in the new place? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes and no. Um, it's a bigger house, but I wouldn't say it has more closets. I'm trying to figure out the storage space. because yeah. Surprisingly, although our house in Los Angeles was smaller, it had a lot of storage. So now I'm like, the storage is different here. Yeah. So it's like, uh, well, now what do I do? You know, <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. Bake bread, I guess, right? <laughs> like yeah, everybody else yeah. did that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's another uh, production you're involved in, Bluff. Mm. That's about yeah. that one. That is some... Um, that was a TV series I worked on up in Canada because I'm also Canadian and spent 10 years living up in Canada and working up there. Yeah. So it was um, something that um, a, a dear friend of mine had created as a project, as sort of a, a, um, a learning project herself. She'd done a little sort of video thing at her house and then she wanted to develop in, into something more. And she'd called me and asked if I would come be an actor in, in an episode. And I said, yes, I will. And, and I came up and I did that. And then she decided to do like a season and she pulled together an amazing group of people and talented behind the scenes people and, and asked me to come direct some episodes, which I was very excited about. So I helped write some of it 
And then I directed a number of episodes and just had the best time. And I just so appreciated um, what Jewel, uh, the opportunity she gave me to, and the trust that she put in me to come and, and, and direct some of this and help her create this. So that again, another little show that is available, um, on DVD and, you know, you have to dig around for that or yeah. you know, some streaming places, but you know, yeah. it's, it's a little detective, a detective show. And I play a, um, a judge. You play a judge. It's got an agenda. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with reservations, what a cool name uh, handle that is. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. Have watched many of your reminiscences, uh, reminiscences, and which includes shots of your surroundings. I'm curious about whether you do any gardening or not, being not. around <laughs> <laughs> flowers that's, that's and trees. My husband. And my husband takes care of the yard. I, I do the house, he does the yard. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to yes, um, so he does all the yard projects. I mean, he'll be talking you know, about shots like this. Yeah, and, well, you can see the look on my face. That's about how I feel about like, gardening. Come on. How long do I got to be <laughs> I, here? I love this? the um, I love the um results of it. I love beautiful gardens and, and beautiful uh, settings. But I I'm not a hands on. I mean, I will if I have to. But yeah. if it was left to me, it probably wouldn't happen it so much. Uh... I'd be more likely to bring someone in to do it, whereas my husband enjoys it. I'll do like I'll do all the interior painting and and you know work with the the decorator or you yeah. know the, or the remodeling or you know yeah. or or put it you know I'm the one who did ninety five percent of the unpacking and putting away things in the house. So so I kind of take care of the inside and. You know, go. You like that? Good. You you go do you that. Walk in. You want to plant a rose bush there? Go ahead and yeah. put the tree there. Yeah. And he's he's so sweet. He's all because he, he'll always want to involve me. He goes, well, uh, come come here. Come look at this one. So I'm thinking about getting this plant here, and and I have opinions. It's true. You know, so sure. sometimes I don't like things to look too much like weeds. You know, so yeah. And, yeah. You know, when you're in places where you need to be respectful of drought tolerance and things like yeah. that, so he's very much good about that but i'm always kind of like but i also still want it to be pretty i want it to you know i want color i want you know yeah, so exactly there's, there's a balance for all of us in the choices we make that's right exactly here's another cool shot judy mm, that's from bluff yeah and what's yeah. happening in that scene do you recall that scene? we are between we're, we're between takes and um, the between takes scenes look great too. <laughs> yeah. So that was Mark Gant, who was our lead actor, who was a very super talented actor, writer, director, producer. And um, so I have no idea what we're actually just talking something. about, yeah. you know, just yeah. something between takes. Yeah. But yeah. It's a, it's a sweet shot. Probably saying to each other, my God, the craft services on this gig are incredible. <laughs> yeah. And aren't we lucky it's not snowing yet, which it <laughs> was about a week later. And we had a real challenge to finish uh, the shooting because all of a sudden we had some more exterior shots to shoot. We were up in Canada, up in Alberta, Canada, and it snowed early. So overnight, and we were shooting, we were doing what we call block shooting. So we were shooting four episodes at the same time. Um, so we would do all of it. They were half hour episodes. So it was kind of like we were shooting a two hour movie that was going to be four segments. Um, and we still had exteriors from different episodes. So it was kind of like if we shoot all of a sudden there's snow and yet later the next scene, there might be an exterior with no snow. So we had this um, wonderful um, director of photography, Marvin Rush, who just, you know, he, he, you know, he was like, okay, well, if we shoot like this and we do this and we angle here, you won't see the snow and it'll be great. And I'm like, great, <laughs> do it. <laughs> Help save me. Um, so we figured it out, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, like, like heights and, um, cold water. I'm not fond of like super cold weather, although I spent 10 years living in Canada in and Canada, dealt yeah. with 30, 30 below temperatures up there, but mm. I'm still kind of a wimp about it. So it was like, it was freezing out there and I didn't have appropriate uh, winter gear with me. So everybody kept piling coats and things yeah. on me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, the poor little Southern California yeah, girl is just yeah. out of her element here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets your gun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was some um, in Orange, Texas, at this beautiful the Lutcher Theater in Orange, Texas. It's gorgeous. 
big, th- I love working in big theaters with full orchestras. It's such yeah. a treat. <laughs> you know, you just sit backstage and listen to the overture and go, oh, yes, yes, I get to do this for a living. This is so <laughs> cool. And that is uh, Richard White, who um, has done a lot of theater production. And he was the, for those of you who watch Disney, in the original Beauty and the Beast movie, he was the voice of Gaston. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, That's so yeah. yeah, another amazing singing voice, you know. Mm, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Shoosh. That was probably one of my favorite musicals to do. Because again, it's 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 it was kind of like if Mary Ellen was like in that era, that would have been Mary Ellen, you know. Yeah. Annie Annie Oakley was a you know, a whole tomboy thing, and you know, so getting to getting to do all that was was a lot of fun. Mm. Tell us about this. Um, Moments Remembered is um, a two-person show that I wrote and um, did a number of times with Don Most from Happy Days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And We're trying well, to connect with him. If you talk to him, love to oh, have him on the show. We had Anson absolutely. Williams, Marion Ross is tomorrow. Love yeah, to I'm get sure Donnie. he'd love to. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, doing, he's working all the time. And, and during the time that we worked together, he was talking about wanting to start doing some singing again. And we talked about it. And I, I think it helped inspire him to just get going. And he's been doing all these like big band concert um, gigs. Yeah. But what happened was um, we were supposed to do love letters, a two person sure. book in hand show. And the producer called me, I don't know, you know, maybe a couple months before we were supposed to do the show. And he said, they've tripled the rights. I can't afford it. We, you know, we just, we, we would, you know, the theater doesn't support that kind of a budget. And so I just, you know, in sort of half laughing, half joking, half not, I said, well, you know, we should create our own show that is similar, but you know, not the same show. And we we're talking a little bit. He goes, Oh, that's a great idea. Let's do that. So I kind of talked myself into having to write this thing. So it was two character show. And, um, I wanted something again, that was simple that you could have script in hand so what it was, was this couple that originally met when they were in college and she talked him when they were, when they were engaged into keeping a journal, keeping a diary. And so they each kept these, these sort of journal diaries for, for their whole life. And then one, one evening they decide that they're going to read them. Mm. So they each pull out their journal and they read but they, you know, unlike love letters where the people never, never interact. Right. In this one, we were able to interact. And so it is, it's the story of their from getting, you know, meeting in college and getting married and having four kids and what happened with the kids and the struggles and of, you know, relationships, you know, right. what, what they went through, how they got through things, how they almost broke up the time, you know, they almost got divorced. They worked it out, losing a child. I mean, just all, all the types of things that people go through in relationships and parenting over the course of, you know, a 30, 40, 50 year marriage. And so we, we did the show a few times. And in fact, that producer is reaching out to some theaters now that theaters are opening up again to see about potentially placing the show in some other theaters. So if anyone out there, my phone's going to start ringing, um, That's it. Yeah, you know, a smaller theater that would like to do a, just a two person show, super simple to do. And, you know, you can, do it yourself with your own characters, or you could call and potentially get Don and I to come to your theater and do the show. Anywhere across the country? Sure. Cool. There That's you go. Fantastic. I mean, it's right. super simple because it can be any setting. We've, yeah. we've created different settings. One time we did it like in their living room. We created a living room set. One time we did it where they were like on a back patio overlooking a lake or something. So you can create it. It's designed to be done in any kind of, it can be done in a black box. It could be done with two chairs. It could be, so set doesn't matter. And you don't have a huge rehearsal time because it's script in hand. And the story just kind of tells itself, so. Really nice. Yeah. I just wanna show you a couple of things. People, are, they've been commenting throughout um, our um, episode here of our show. Maureen in very hot. Uh, she's still with us. I guess the air conditioning dude came maybe, hopefully. Uh, hopefully you're not sitting in that heat wave there in Arizona. I'm quite impressed by the many adventures you've had since the Waltons. Mm. What an incredible career and so much more to come. Oh, thank you, Maureen. 
Janet says, I never realized that you're such a talented down to earth individual. Mm. That is beautiful as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for a lovely evening as well. And they've been commenting about um, the photos too. Th this mm. one, we called this up a little bit earlier. This is a cute one. Yeah, <laughs> my I call that my Peter Pan look. <laughs> I was gonna say, you are walking versatility, Judy Norton. You are <laughs> versatile. <laughs> what, this was, that uh, was from, from that an episode? episode of The Waltons. And yeah. it was just, I don't know where the wardrobe department found that little hat, but I always <laughs> felt like I looked like Peter Pan, <laughs> <laughs> which was a show I always wanted to do because I, I've never gotten to do a show where I got to like fly, you know, yeah. like Peter Pan to fly. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw that one before too. Yeah. This is a great one also. So many of them, you know, when you look at all of this uh, incredible career that you've had and you know, the people you've worked with over the years, um, a lot of blessing, a lot of blessing yeah. and a lot of joy along the way. Wouldn't you say? Oh, Judy? I've been, I've been so lucky. I, you know, I'm aware of that, that the opportunities I've had that, yeah. you know, that this show, the doors, this show opened for me, you know, I'm, I'm just so grateful. It's a great yeah. shot there too. Yeah. That was a headshot shoot for when I was about 17, 16, 17. Wow. Really fantastic. And again, what was it like for you guys? Uh, I think I, Cammie Cutler and I chatted about this. She, she brought up what it was like when you would have people, other celebrities, other legends coming on set from time to time with different episodes. Um, what was that like for you guys? Um, well, we had a mix of things because we had people like Beulah Bondi, who was just, you know, a legend. Um, you know, people may remember her from It's a Wonderful Life. She played um, Jimmy Stewart's mother in that, in that, uh, and Ellen Corby was in that movie also. And so someone like that, who we knew had just this amazing career, I think we were respectful and uh, maybe didn't goof around so much when it was someone like that. Not that we goofed around a lot, but, you know, you were, I think, more aware of just being respectful when we had someone like that or a Gene Marsh. Um, but a lot of the people that worked on our show became really big stars later. So, I mean, someone like John Ritter, we loved working with him, but he wasn't the mega star that he became after the Waltons, after he did Three's Company and started doing movies and stuff. You know, he was like John Ritter, a fabulous actor and a really fun guy to have yeah. on set. Yeah. Uh, Ron Howard, when he did, uh, you know, an episode, I mean, he'd already done the Andy Griffith show, and, but it was before Happy Days and before he started directing. And so it's like I was familiar with him and I thought it was a big deal that he was coming to do the Walton. So that was really cool. Um, but like Sissy Spacek, when she did the show, she was early in her career. So it wasn't she wasn't Sissy Spacek already. Carrie. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or Jennifer Jason Lee or, you know. Um, so sometimes we caught people really on the on the ascent, you know, people that, you know, would probably go, Waltons, what was that? Who are you? <laughs> you <know? Yeah. laughs> and I'm like, I worked with that person. <laughs> you know, you know, what? <laughs> so, wh when and where? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what network? Well, um, I always love every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> I never assume people are going to remember. If, if I meet someone that I'm impressed by, that's like, a, you know, like, oh, wow, that's so-and-so. Yeah. Um, I, you know, when I meet them, I never expect them to remember me because I always go, like, I, you know, I did a TV, you know, that's old news. But <laughs> like, I'll remember meeting someone like Isaac Hayes when I, oh, when yeah. I first met Isaac. Isaac and I did, um, it was a show called Dance Fever and they'd have different oh, celebrity sure. judges. So yeah. Isaac and I Danny, were Denny Terrio was the host? Yeah, he yeah, was the host. Sure. So we were judges on Dance Fever. And then a, a few years later, I was at, I was, uh, I was uh, someone who was going to be presenting an award at some music awards thing. So I'm sitting at this table and Isaac Hayes was sitting at the table behind me. And, and I'm like, Oh wow, there's Isaac Hayes. He won't remember me. So he all of a sudden he like taps me on the shoulder and he's like, hi, Isaac Hayes. We did dance fever together. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was completely blown away. I'm like, 
Now, you're Isaac Hayes. I, you know, I'm Judy Norton, you know. <laughs> of course I remember you, but you remember me. Wow. You know, I'm always so flattered if, if you know, if something like that happens. Or I met, um, when I met some of the Happy Days guys, um, we used to play on a baseball team. Uh, the Waltons had a baseball team. And I also used to play for Kiss Radio on their their, they, their radio station, their DJs and whatnot had it had a team. And I used to play on their team. And so one time... We we're playing a game and we we're playing against happy days. And I'd met some of the guys, but I hadn't met Henry Winkler. And so at one point, um, like when we were, I don't know, going out swapping from on field to the, you know, to off field. And, and I was, I introduced him. I'm like, hi, you know, I'm Judy Norton and, you know, really big fan, whatever. And he's like, Oh yeah. I mean, he was very polite. He was like, Oh yeah. Wow. Well, well, thank you. Very. And then, and then it was like, he did a double take and went, Oh, Oh, Yes, of course. Like, you know, like he like he knew who I was. And I was just like, really, again, very I'm always very flattered if someone's like, oh, yes, I saw your show or I like your show. You know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have watched the Waltons. Oh, yeah. I would never think of people who I think are famous watching our show. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, no, 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 it's in a bubble. You know, it's nobody watches bubble. the Waltons who's famous. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but they did and they still do, which is quite amazing. Um when you look back at it, we're talking about some 50 years. Uh, somebody had a comment too I, about a celebration, I think, that happened. I recall you all were ah. Virginia for the 40th celebration of the series. Any plans on going back to Virginia for a 50th? Um, well, next year will be the, the 50th of the series starting. Right. Um, this year is the 50th of the homecoming. Right. Um, so, I mean, the cast, um, a number of us, me and John and Mary and Cammy and Eric all got on Zoom um, about a week ago or so, maybe two weeks to talk about what we might want to try and do for the 50th and whether we want to do one thing, whether we want to try and do several things. So we're talking, we're exploring a number of options because, you know, it's not nothing to try and put something together. And so we need you know, we need a venue, we need somebody to help produce it, we need, you know, some place that makes sense that has the logistics for it that can bring the cast in, that can put us up that, you know, all those types of things. So we were kind of brainstorming a bit on what might be options and where we might be able to go. Um, so it may not be in Virginia at the museum because spaces, options are limited there. Yeah. Um, and we've done that a lot. And we kind of feel like, you know, everybody has had to go to Virginia all the time, which is not always easy for people. So we yeah. thought maybe we should try and do some things in other parts of the country. So I don't know. It's all talk right now. So again, my phone needs to ring because, you know, somebody's got a great venue and a great thing and some great sponsors and they're going to say, let's hey, get going, right? You know, I yeah. have a theater, you know, my dad's got a barn, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that that's the way it always happened in the Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland movies. So that's exactly right. <laughs> Merlin in Ontario, Canada says, do you think Tom Selleck would remember you? LOL. <laughs> that's a, it, I've often wondered that I have not crossed paths with him in a long time. And, and the carrying I, across the yeah, uh, field. After the battle of the network stars, I remember when he was doing Magnum PI, there was a point where um, I went over to Hawaii for something and they were filming. And I remember I went on his set, you know, and, and, and visited him. And I mean, but this was not too long after the battle. So, you know, he gave me, you know, passes to get on the, you know, on the, on the set and stuff like that. So at that point he still remembered me, you know, I've always been kind of curious now. I'm like, I, I need to dig him up and see if <laughs> it's like, you carried me off the field. I thought, it, I thought we had a moment. I thought that was, uh, <laughs> and the, the network captured it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can show you footage. It's me. It's, honest. <laughs> it's on film. Uh, maybe you can get a, a part on blue bloods. Yeah. Tom, Tom, are you watching? <laughs> um, you know, when you look at all of this, um, it's, it's quite amazing to have been part of something that, as I mentioned in the introduction, is a, an American treasure, an Americana, uh, so wonderful for the time and still beloved to this day. And, uh, you know, the feedback that you get, I'm sure, is still to this day sort of touches your heart, doesn't it? The, the, the way people... You know, when you're on television and people grow up with a series, whether it's a sitcom, a drama, anything, they really get attached to the storyline, the characters. They feel like you're a part of them. They're a part of you. So even though it's an acting role or it's a, 
you know, camera person's role, lighting director, whatever it is, <clears throat> the body of work and the sum of all those parts creates, you know, magical moments that really go deep beyond just the acting and, you know, the production part of it, the, the, the work. Um, for you, when you hear these stories and letters and somebody bumps into you in the supermarket, oh my God, I have to tell you what it meant to me, uh, must really touch you uh, deeply, huh? Yeah, we've heard amazing stories over the years. When we were first doing the series, because it wasn't a live show, right. we didn't have interaction with the audience at the time. Uh, so we didn't originally know what kind of impact it was having. If people liked the show, didn't like the show, people were clearly watching it, but we didn't know what they thought of it beyond they liked the show enough to watch it. Then as the years have gone by, and we've had more opportunity to interact with people that have been touched by the show. We have heard these just amazing stories. And I get people writing comments on my YouTube channel and telling me stories about what the show has meant to them or their family or the tough times it got. The number of people who told me you know, in this last year with COVID how much my YouTube channel meant to them that I was talking about the Waltons and doing all this and reaching out to the, the viewers and the fans that it meant a lot to them. And you know, at points when I was like, okay, this is a lot of work. And do I really want to keep doing this? And then I'd be like, oh, but I get such wonderful comments. You know, I would feel, I would feel bad if I stopped it because I seem it's, it's corny, but it's almost, you know, there's moments where they're like, oh, you're doing like a community service for us. And I was like, wow. You know, I mean, it's, it's so, it is, it's so heartwarming and people that have had illnesses and, you know, people that would tell me that, you know, they were going through cancer treatment and yeah. when, they were, when they were having their chemo and all they could do was, you know, sit and they would watch the Waltons because it made them feel better. I mean, come on, you know, it's it, all of a sudden it's, you know, we thought, oh, we're doing a fun little thing. You know, I enjoy what I'm doing. We're, we're making up stories and we're playing make believe and people are watching, you know, that that's kind of what we do. It can seem like our business is so frivolous and, and yet, all of a sudden it doesn't seem so frivolous. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, and something that has stood the test of time like this, and they still feel the way that they do them. I mean, some can probably reenact scenes in front of you too. I remember when the, and then the, and then the, which is amazing, right? Yeah. They know it better than I do. I <laughs> they mean, jog the memory, right? <laughs> you know, they'll comment. I mean, I've been watching more of the episodes because of, you know, doing the YouTube stuff. I've had to watch the episodes to be able to talk about them. And yet then they'll, they'll comment about something or they'll correct something I got wrong. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you're right. I got that wrong. <laughs> I don't remember all 220 something episodes. And these people that so many of them have been watching them year after year. And they've watched these, you know, episodes 10, 20, 30 times. And, you know, some of them I'm not sure I've ever seen because I maybe didn't originally see them. And then it was off the air and yeah. you couldn't record stuff back then. And, then when it was on, it was on a channel I didn't get. And right. so it's, yeah. So what I'm was it like when uh, yeah. <laughs> you're getting a chance to see them again? Like, yeah, I was like, pretty, wow, this is pretty good. I was pretty good in that scene. <laughs> well, they, they wrote some good stories. They had, we had some good actors. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the ladder. They didn't, I didn't want to be on that ladder, but yeah. boy, I, I yeah. mastered that ladder. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, sometimes I'll watch a scene and go, oh, I remember when I first watched this episode. You know how much I, I I watched scene that I did and went oh god I hate I can't even watch that oh that's so bad and now and and I'll go to watch the episode and go I don't know if I'm gonna be able to watch this because I remember how bad I thought I was and then I'll watch it and go oh I was actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> how about your family too? I would imagine you know your family seeing the Waltons and and those you know your loved ones over the years as well. Um, their reactions must be you know quite unique and amazing too. Wow, that's that's our Judy. I was, um, my sister, we were talking recently and she's been um, helping me with some stuff with the channel. And so she's been starting to watch episodes again. And she told me something I never knew. She, she, she said, cause she did some acting too. We all, my brother and, and my sister and I all kind of did a little bit of acting when we were young, but I'm the only one who stayed with it. Um, and she said that when I first got cast on the show and she watched some episodes she was like 
well, I don't understand why, you know, I can, why she's getting paid to just, she's just being herself. She's just being her bratty self, you know? <laughs> Siblings, so that was her siblings. original opinion of it, that it was just like, well, that's just how she is all the time. She's not acting. That's Judy. <laughs> um, yeah. Alison um, Arngrim, who was on the show too, she had that because everybody thought that she and Nellie Olson were one. And sometimes there would be people who would come up to her and really lay into her because of the character not realizing, and, and she would say, uh, Madam, I'm just acting the part. <laughs> yeah. I'm not Nelly, <laughs> only on set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's fascinating to me sometimes, even the questions that, I, I did a whole segment about the house and, and about how we shot it and how it was just a facade on the front and then yeah. inside the soundstage. And there were, there were definitely people who were upset because, you know, they thought, Oh, I thought it was a real house and now all my illusions are destroyed. And I, you know, part of me felt bad, you know, but then there were a lot of people who were like fascinated and liked hearing all of that. So, yeah. um, yeah, so now I try to, if I'm going to tell them a bunch of stuff, tell them that they're spoilers and, you know, it's like, right. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> and we're gonna, we have a clip we're going to show as well, which is which is kind of cool. Um, what are some of the things you have, you're mentioning a little bit in the beginning, some of the things that you're working on that are coming up. I would imagine, again, you're waiting for things to sort of open, you know, studios sort of things are slowly coming back here and there. Um, would you ever write a book? No. You said that fast. <laughs> <laughs> You've yeah, probably been asked I, too, probably. Right? Yeah, I mean, some of it is really, I'm more of a script writer than a book writer, just yeah. stylistically. So I'd have to have somebody else write it. And I'm just sort of, that's why I'm doing, again, that's why I'm doing the YouTube stuff. It's like, I don't mind talking, but I, I don't like having to, I'm not good at having to worry about every word yeah. and, and the structure and the grammar and the, all of that. And I feel like if you write a book, you have to be good at all that stuff. And, and I'm just, it's like, those are a lot of pages to fill. Even a script I can look at and go, if I'm writing a film and I know it's going to be, I'm looking at, you know, 90 to a hundred pages, blank pages I have to fill, but somehow I can think with that better than the idea of, something this thick that I have to like completely fill the, it's like, Oh, dialogue fills a lot on a page. And that's like, just like talking. Right. Um, but prose, I'm just like, eh, you know, so I, I don't think I ever will. It, it just doesn't, it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. It doesn't come <laughs> naturally for you. Right. Right. You prefer the other. No, I mean, Mary McDonough that. who played Aaron is written. Yeah. She wrote one book about her experiences on the Waltons and then she's written, um, at least three fiction books that are wonderful. Um, so she's kind of more the book writer. I could see Cammy writing a book because she, with her huge major education and she, you know, works for school and has taught and That's right, yeah. she's the erudite one in the family. So, yeah. you know, I could see her um, writing, you know, and, and even her, her Facebook page or, you know, that she's far more inclined to write all kinds of detail in there and, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there things on that bucket list for you, Judy? Things that you're like, gee, I really would like to tackle that, do that. And they don't even have to be in entertainment or film or television. It could just be in life. Things that you're like, I, I really would like to you know, check that out and do that, be a part of that. It's interesting because... A number of years back, um, I, I attended a like a workshop um, with with someone who ended up being a friend of mine. And one of the things that he said early on in the workshop was he had everybody write down things that when they were young, they always wanted to do. What were some of your goals and stuff when you were young? So I made this, you know, I made this list of, you know, when I was young all the things that I thought I wanted to do. And then he's like, okay, now take a look at that list and see how many of those things you've done. And when I looked at that list, there were a lot of things I'd done. And when I look at even some of the things that I've sort of pivoted into, whether it's writing or directing or the singing or, uh, you know, it's, 
I can look back and, and recognize that there was a point in time where I went, I'd really like to do that. But even just a passing thought thinking, oh, I'll never get to do that, or I would never do that, or I'm not good enough to do that, or nobody would ever be interested. And yet somehow, you know, the things that we think and project have power, you know, and they can drive us forward, even if we're not always consciously thinking about it. Uh, and that's been the case for me, which is why I think it's always so important to not not focus on negative things. I can't this, I can't that, I won't this, this will never happen because we do create our own reality, whether it's good or bad. So if we're always focused on negative things, then we're in a way perpetuating those. So, um, you know, I try to stay really positive and I try to look forward and I always try to have goals for the future, no matter how, even if it's like, well, I'm gonna get this room painted because it puts future there. Right. And I think that for me, the more, you know, the, the older I get and the more things I can look at and think, well, there are certain things I will not do at this point in my life, you know, because the ship has sailed, you know, um, I will never play certain roles on TV or film because I'm just, I've aged out of them, you know, and I understand that it's kind of like being a dancer or being a professional athlete. There's, you have certain windows of time for certain elements of, of a career. So, but I'm always trying to look for where are there not limitations. Right. Um, so that was, you know, part of the writing was that, that way, because I don't need anybody else to do that. I don't need anybody else's promise or commitment or so sometimes I just do it for me, you know, or the singing. Sometimes it's like, I can always invite people over and go, Hey, we're going to have a little, gathering at the house and I'm going to sing. And that was some of the first ways I sang. It's like, you're coming to my Christmas party. You have to listen to me sing <laughs> you're in my house. So my rules. Yeah. And so, as long as you bring a dessert or wine. I don't even care if you show up and, just you, and, come you yeah. and you're going to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And you don't throw things. <laughs> so, um, you know, there are still things I'm doing. I mentioned that I just uh, directed a short film that I wrote. So um, we're editing that. And, and then I will, once we figure out where people can see it, it'll just be something to share with people. And, um, you know, my thought, my wild thought was that, you know, if people really loved it, then maybe it could turn into something else. You know, it could turn into a, a series concept on, you know, on, on cable or on YouTube, or it could. Or Amazon you know, or, yeah. Google or all these other they venues. They keep telling now. me everybody's looking for content. So they just have yeah. to look in Netflix you know. or there's so many <laughs> venues now, you know, 2 million venues. Yeah. 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 Would you like to, exactly. if the opportunity came to be a part of another television series, would you consider it? I would, um, you know, one, um, there's, I mean, some parts are more interesting than others. I, I kind of moved away from some acting because the roles just weren't particularly satisfying. So I'm kind of, I'm not really retired, but I'm not really pursuing a lot of stuff. So I'm kind of in that sort of gray area of um, if opportunities present themselves that appeal to me, I'll do them. And if they don't, then I have other things that I can be doing. So yeah, I keep busy. <laughs> <You too. laughs> what would you say to somebody who's watching maybe live or watches this in our archives later, Judy, who's considering, cause it's changed greatly in so many different ways going into a career. Maybe they've been inspired by you. Um, and maybe even this conversation we've been having, um, and they're like, gee, I would like to try some of that. I would like to do that too. Um, again, it's a, it's an unpredictable, we're in these unpredictable, ever changing, morphing industries that uh, have a lot of roller coaster elements to them. Um, what would you say to somebody watching who is being inspired by what they're hearing you say tonight? Um, well, I think you have to absolutely want to do it. If it's a casual sort of job, oh, I think that might be kind of fun, or I think it would be fun to be famous, or, you know, I would say, also, I think if you would be really happy doing something else as well, then I would say skip it, because it's, it's, um, it can be a very frustrating 
a very heartbreaking industry and the majority of people don't have major success, even if they work regularly or even if they work periodically, the majority of people have day jobs as well. So I think people that really pursue areas of the arts, it's because it is a passion. It's, it's a calling. It's, it's, it's who you are, which is kind of how it's always been for me that times I've gotten out of it. And when, you know, when I was raising my son and I'm like, I can't be on the road. I, you know, I, I want to raise my son. So I stepped out of it for a while, but I would always find creative outlets because it's just, it's my, you know, it's my DNA. It's who I am. I'm, I'm an artist at heart. So even if it's like, well, I'll paint this room. <laughs> you know, I will decorate my bedroom because it's artistic. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways to pursue art. And I feel like it's an important part of all of our lives to have an aesthetic in our lives. And it can uplift us. It can inspire us. You know, it it's beauty and, and art. I mean, imagine a culture without that. It's, it's mm. sad commentary. So, um, I mean, there's a there's hundred different avenues into it. You know, back in the day, before my day, in the golden age of Hollywood, you had to get a studio contract or you weren't going to work. Then things opened up and it was the era of the independent, but, you know, it was still through studios. Then the whole independent world, anybody with, you know, hello, I'm going to go shoot, you know, I'm going to yeah. go shoot a film. Right. Um, somebody once said, which is very true, just because everyone can shoot a film doesn't mean they should. Yes, right. <laughs> right. I agree. You know, so there's a lot of stuff out there. Doesn't that, mean it's all good. You gotta sift um, through it. Yeah. It does mean that people can they can explore, they can learn, and there's all kinds of avenues online and things you can learn there. Um, studying, learning, finding a group of people and working your way up in terms of your your skill and your proficiency explore the different areas, you know, it's like, yeah, go check it out. If, if you think you would enjoy it or it's something you're really drawn to. I couldn't, I couldn't begin to tell you how to get into the industry these days. I am so far out of the loop. You know, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm me. <laughs> I am not a good resource. You know, people will say, Hey, I have a script that would make a great movie. And I'm like, good for you. I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you find that, let me know because I got a script too. I have a script too. <laughs> Merlin, Ontario, asks, do you like uh, Ontario, Canada, co comedic or dramatic roles? Do you, do you lean? You've got a good sense of humor. You roll with it, which I love. Um, I have done more drama, so I probably feel more confident in drama. But I have done some comedy, and it's and sometimes it's kind of nice to get away from the. We did a lot of. We did a lot of crying on the Waltons, you know, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, I, I'm good at it. I, you know, I cultivated those skills, uh, but sometimes it's nice to do something lighter as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you don't have to quite so much drop it at the end of the day and go, okay, <laughs> you know, perhaps that martini. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> you mentioned your son, is he in the industry at all or pursuing it? Um. Yes and no. I mean, he is. He's he's interested more behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, he does all the editing for my YouTube channel uh, at the moment, and and some other. He's so he's still in school, but he's interested in various different behind the scenes aspects of it. Um, so what what avenue? And he's he is very. He, he also you know sings, plays guitar, that kind of thing. At one point, he was interested in pursuing music, but decided you know to switch. So he's still kind of finding his way, but it was, has he been tickled that you were Mary Ellen Walton on the Waltons or is he, that's just my mom. Um, well, when he, I mean, it, it, it's interesting at what age they start putting it together. Like when he right. was little, um, I would watch the Waltons sometimes and he got to know the music. Yeah. So when you hear the theme song, you go, Oh, John boy. Yeah. You know? right. And then he got used to the fact that um, because he was born in Canada when I was up there and I was doing a lot of uh, just guest spots on different shows and things up in Canada while I lived there. So he would see me on different things on TV um, when he was little. And so when he'd see somebody on TV that looks anything like me, he'd go, oh, is that you? <laughs> you <know? laughs> he just thought I was always on TV. Um, and then I think he started figuring out when he saw people recognize me. 
and be impressed. Then he started figuring out that he could play that card. Oh, well, my mom was on the Waltons. <laughs> my mom was on that show and yeah, yeah. with those people. And <laughs> yeah, but mostly, yeah. I mean, I think it's more, you know, I, he's been, he's, he never really watched the Waltons very much. So when he started doing, you know, helping me with the YouTube channel, he had to see more of it and watch more of it and get more familiar with it. So I think he has appreciated it more uh, since, since that point that he's kind of gotten more familiar. So that's kind of nice, but still well, I'm mostly mom. <laughs> your mom, your mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not very impressed by me in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your vegetables. <laughs> uh, what are some of the other uh, blessings uh, and joys in your life that keep you uh, wanting to do this work and, and uh, inspire us in the way that you do, Judy? Uh, well, one of the things that I found when I started moving a bit more behind the scenes, because initially I went to Canada because I was working with a theater company as a writer and director, as an artistic director. And when I started doing that, I thought that would be tough for me to not be the one on stage. Uh, but the very first time I wrote a show that I, you know, I co-wrote and then was involved in the directing of it. And I sat there at opening night in the audience and it was a musical comedy and people laughed. And I was uh, astonished to be like, oh, I was so thrilled. It's like, I wrote that. And people are laughing, you know, and they're enjoying this. And so it was like a whole new kind of world for me. And starting to work on that side and having the opportunity to basically hire people. I know so many talented people. And so I love directing and the little bit of producing I've done. Um, I don't like, you know, there's a lot of elements of producing I don't like. But what I love about that side of it is being able to tell an actor they have a job, you know, hey, come do something for me, come work, you know, because I know how much it always meant to me to have somebody to get that call. So to be able to say to people that I think are really talented that should be working all the time yeah. and like, you know, why has somebody not recognized the talent of this person or even somebody that does work a lot and still go, hey, come, let's play. Right. You know, it's just, if I could do that all the time, hire actors. <laughs> <laughs> come together and work with them. And, you know, that, that camaraderie, that forming of a team and a bond that always happens when you do a play or, or do a film or do a TV show. It's just, there's, to me, these artists bond in a way that I've never experienced in any other arena. You know, I mean, maybe because you have to trust each other so much and you have to be so willing to be open and vulnerable and your emotions have to be on display and all of those sorts of things that that make people talented performers you know there's a sensitivity and 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 we we protect each other and it's a family and you and you have to rely on each other to get the work done and you have to trust each other in those vulnerable moments when you're doing tough scenes and, and things like that or on stage when something goes wrong and you you have to kind of make it make it work so and I love crafting. I love taking something that I created as a concept and, or even someone else's work and directing it and bringing it to life and, and just seeing all of that happen. So that's what continues to inspire me. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Uh, you know, you also inspired somebody else who's uh, with us this evening. Uh, Mr. George Burns is in the house <laughs> <laughs> with his cigar and he's, Thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, oh, good. So glad. <laughs> I, I don't know if you ever got a chance to meet or work with him. <laughs> I was some um, part of a, I, I, I don't know that I actually got to meet him, but um, years ago, and it hangs on my wall in my house, um, there was a CBS 50th anniversary special that was done for the first 50 years of CBS. And they pulled together all of the actors from CBS shows for the first 50 years and they did a, like a two hour special and then they did a photo shoot. So I have this photo that hangs on my wall of these, just all these CBS stars. And it's amazing. And George Burns is front and center. 
So he was there. I was in a photo shoot. I'm in a picture with him. He's with like George. Oh, Williams. Williams. You know? That yeah. was amazing. I believe that they have. Um, there's a little YouTube clip up about. I yes. Think, sent me recently. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's. Yeah. Um, and it pans across CBS. Um, Television City. Yeah. And they yes. just down the row of. Of, my neighbor, my neighbor, who's who works in 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 the industry, he's like all of a sudden he sent me. He's like, "Hey, look at this! I was I was just watching this because he's a total movie buff." And he's yeah. like, "And I went, that's 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 Judy. She lives across the street from me, you know." Right. <laughs> yeah. When they did that pan, they did fiftieth, and then I think they did a seventy fifth anniversary of CBS. But that when they had everybody on the balcony yeah. there wrapped around Television City. Mary Tyler Moore, Dick Van Dyke, Walter Cronkite, every, I mean, it was just yep. incredible. It was yeah. decades of, of talent and uh, I miss that stuff. You know what I yeah. mean? There was just something about the grandeur and just, just the feeling of all of that, that I don't know, things are very splintered now and things are very, I don't know if they could ever pull that kind of thing together anymore. That was a very special, <clears throat> you were on television on a beloved series at a very special time for television. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and we're happy that you were. <laughs> uh, Anne says, thank you, Judy, for a wonderful evening. Oh, my pleasure. And Linda O'Dell, whose uh, birthday is today, I see. Happy oh, birthday, happy Linda. Happy birthday, Linda. Judy Norton and Jim Masters wish you happy birthday, Linda. Thank you, Judy, for sharing your life story with uh, with all of us. And um, really, really beautiful. Uh, I think we talked about this a little bit. She wanted to know what was your, do you have an episode that's your personal favorite? Um, would the wedding one be? No, I mean, probably more, I'd say maybe the Easter story. Yeah. 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 Don't go away, anybody, because we have a special video that uh, Judy made, which actually takes us on a tour of the house uh, where Walton's was, uh, well, the house that was used and really, really cool. That must have been fun doing that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing people back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Jameis, by the way, your talent attracts the best talent. We love it. We're so grateful you decided to bring these wonderful gifted people for us to get to know. Oh, my pleasure. I think on our show, we get a chance. Uh, you may have known of Judy's talent and her work and her spirit and her passion, but now you know a little bit more about the person. So next time you see something Judy's in or you hear her singing or there's a show or something, you'll have a deeper appreciation for Judy Norton the person Maureen in Arizona who did post earlier, the AC dude did show up. The temperature oh, has dropped down to 80 in her house oh, in good. Arizona. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah. Thank God. Um, Judy, you're an absolute delight. Thanks so much for the photos and telling your stories. Uh, absolutely. And Janet says, um, thank you for such an inspirational evening. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really beautiful stuff. And uh, Jen Barry watching in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Jim and Judy. Jim, have Judy back. Love her. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Judy, this really was fantastic. And I really appreciate uh, all the time and and just going down memory lane, but also hearing about some of the things that uh, you're passionate about mm -hmm. and, and the things you're doing today and the things that you've had an opportunity to be a part of beyond the Waltons, because we know you for the Waltons, but um, there's so much more to who, you know, Judy Norton is beyond the Waltons, even though that was a major part of your life. Um, cool stuff. So, um, this was great. And I toast you, and I really hope that, uh, the show met whatever expectations you had, Judy, and uh, you enjoyed the time with me as much as I definitely have with you. Oh, it's been great fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You are very, very welcome. You take care. And Thank like you. I say to all the guests, go stretch those legs. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> we, we actually chatted, believe it or not, for two hours, but it didn't, it didn't feel like it, huh? <laughs> Every guest says it just goes by, you yes. know, in a New York minute, uh, which is really, really nice. Judy, you take care and uh, hopefully we'll meet one of these days if I'm on a TV shoot out west there in LA or you are uh, on the East Coast. That would be a pleasure. Thanks for all the time uh, and Thank again you. for 
for all of your contributions to the arts, to entertainment. Uh, we thank you very much for all thank of it. Thank you. And thanks to everyone out there who has watched it and made it possible. All the loveities. Yep. <laughs> thanks, Judy. You take care and be well. Okay. Thanks for joining us on the show. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> bye bye now. The wonderful Judy Norton. Now, don't go anywhere, folks. We have a special gift for you, a special surprise. There is a video that Judy made where she takes you on a tour of the Walton's house. So let's go to that right now, and then we'll be back. Uh, this is a really cool video. Here it is. Again, she takes you on the tour of the Walton's house behind the scenes with Judy Norton. I get asked a lot about the Walton House. So today I thought I'd take you behind the scenes of the Walton House, both the interior of the house and the exterior of the house. The exterior of the house was on the back lot of Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California. And it was really just a facade. There was a front, there were sides and not a complete back. There were a couple of actual workable spaces inside uh, when you went in the house from the back porch, where you actually saw that there was sort of a root cellar there too, that wasn't really a practical root cellar. You couldn't actually go down inside it. But that room, if you went in the back door of the house, the space there led into what became our makeup room when we were on the back lot of the studio. So that was where every morning or whatever time the actors came in, when we were called to get our hair and makeup done, we would go into that room and our hair and makeup people were all set up with their tables and lights and whatnot in there. The other space that was available was off of the front door. And it was really just sort of a small holding area. And there were some stairs that went partway up and turned a corner. And then again, just a holding space. You could also get to the second story of the house via sort of an inside ladder that took you up to a landing that sat behind the various different windows that you could see from the front of the house. So at any point, if we were clearly outside and you could see all of the house and there were lights on or you could see maybe John Boy, you know, in his in his window or leaning out or something like that, uh, that would be basically standing on just a wood platform up there and they could put lights up there so that you could see John Boy's light on at night. But that was the extent of all of the spaces that you could get to inside the house. Sometimes when we were outside, we would shoot the actual porch scenes on that exterior set. And when we were shooting on the exterior set, you couldn't actually see through the windows into the living room. So anytime you see anyone on the porch and you're able to actually see into the living room, that would have been shot on the porch inside. All of the interiors of the Walton house were all on stage 26 at Warner Brothers Studios. So we had the living room and kitchen as one section and you could see the stairs that went up to the second level of the house. But those steps, once we turned the corner and went out of sight, there was really just a very small holding platform there. So when we all had to come running down, we all had to be pretty crammed up there on that little area up at the top of the stairs and we'd all come running down. Mm -hmm. Or if we went up, we all had to kind of cram into that little space. And then there was the door off of that mid platform that went into the grandparents' room. People ask about the door near the front door of the house, there was a door there off to the left. And I have no idea what that was supposed to be. We never really established what it was, whether it was a coat closet or another entrance into grandma and grandpa's bedroom. I don't know. Uh, there was also another door in the kitchen uh, in between the stove and where the sink and counter was off to the left. That again, we never established what it was, probably some sort of utility closet or pantry type space. But what was really out there, you'd go out that door and there was a space on the set 
where the property department would have a working kitchen where all that food that you saw us eat, they would prepare in that kitchen and then bring it through that door to the table. And then of course there was the back porch area that where we exited to leave the house if we were gonna be going out the back porch. All of the bedrooms were on another part of stage 26. So John and Olivia's room also doubled as the girls' room. All they did was change the furniture. And then there was the boys' room and there was John boy's room. So there were actually only three bedrooms that we used that became four bedrooms. And then there was a little bit of um, up at the top of the stairs, you could go down and around a corner just a bit, again, small holding space. And then what was sort of the access to the attic, which if that was ever used, would have been a separate set someplace on stage 26. The other things that were on stage 26 were the interior of Ike Godsey's store. So that was always fun. We knew when we were going to be shooting in Ike Godsey's store that um, it would, all the props and everything would be put in place and the candy counter would be stocked. So I remember when I was young, I was like, oh, we're filming in Ike Godsey's store today. So there will be like fresh candy in there. And I go in and I'm sure I wasn't the only one who went in and sampled the candies in, in Ike Godsey's store on the counter there. Also on stage 26 would be the interior of the Baldwin's house. So their parlor that you saw all the time. And sometimes you saw the room where the recipe still was. So those were sets that um, they would put together on stage 26 when those sets were going to be used. It was a pretty big stage. So sometimes when there was another set that only got used once for some other purpose, they would build it right there on our stage. And then it would be there for the duration of that episode. And then it would be torn down and repurposed for something else. Uh, none of these spaces on stage 26 had ceilings to them. Virtually all the walls were movable, so if the camera needed a different angle, they could take one of those walls out and set up the camera from that angle. Everything had lights rigged from above, and it was very tall in there, so they had uh, lots of catwalks and things up there, and they could move lights all around, drop down rigging all around the edges of the, of the given space, and light from there. Or they would just move their big lights around on the big stands that they were on and light in that way. So that's a sneak peek behind the Walton house, both the interior and the exterior. Um, so hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you're enjoying the videos and I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons. Was that not amazing or what, huh? We really appreciate uh, Judy for sharing that with us here uh, exclusively on the Gym Masters Show Live. Um, you can also check out her website. She's got a fantastic website, judynorton.com. There it is on the screen, judynorton.com. And again, uh, we wanted to surprise you with that little gift, a video and a little behind the scenes of the house. Uh, where they uh, filmed. Of course, they filmed it on the lot. A lot of the scenes were on the actual studio lot. And then they had those exterior shots at that house that was uh, created for the Waltons. Uh, really something extra special. What a night, huh? A really uh, delightful conversation with brilliant actress and theater director, singer, Judy Norton. Uh, claim to fame, many, many things. But of course, notably the Waltons on CBS for so many years, a beloved television series that still to this day is in reruns and uh, on DVD and people can catch it, uh, you know, everywhere just about. And uh, just want to run through a couple of photos here if you missed it or uh, you joined us later. Here's uh, some shots of her singing. She's got a brilliant singing voice as well. Some of the other productions that she's been in, you know, beyond the Waltons. Of course, we all know, all know her for the Waltons originally as Mary Ellen Walton, but uh, 
She's had a prolific career even beyond as a director, as a singer. Some other Cinderella. This is Annie Get Your Gun. And when she was in Cinderella and uh, I Ought to Be in Pictures, Cabaret, and of course, The Waltons. Some behind the scenes shots, getting together with uh, some of the other cast members. You see Cami Cutler on the left, right? She was a guest on the Gym Master Show Live. If you didn't see that episode, check it out. It's right here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Matter of fact, all 400 plus episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, you can see Cami Cutler, uh, Stanley Livingston from My Three Sons, Kathy Garver from Family Affair, uh, so many great people. Glenn Scarpelli from One Day at a Time was a guest, and on and on. Fun story when she mentioned she was on Love Boat for an episode. There's some other great shots of uh, the gang there on the Waltons and some of the other great shots filming and shooting. Great story about Moments Remembered, which uh, she created as well. And of course, Ralph Waite, who played the dad on the Waltons. Some other great shots along the way. Battle of the Network Stars on CBS. Great shot there, too. And there they are, the cast of The Waltons. Yes. Truly uh, pieces of Americana before your eyes. And that was a great story when they got together there. And, of course, the creator of The Waltons as well. Beautiful story there that she shared. Some other great shots along the way. Great story. And there she is with her injured fingers and all, tossing the football around, Battle of the Network Stars. Great story there, too. You have to go back. I don't want to, if you're joining us late, I don't want to give away anything so you can watch the episode again. But again, it was cool having her on the show. And of course, this CD reflections we talked about as well. Some other great shots along the way. Great story about the wedding and how they filmed this outside with the real trees, but they had to sort of reenact it in the studio because there is the close-up shots that they didn't get a chance to get. Really, we thank very much Judy Norton for uh, gracing us with her amazing presence as a guest on the Gym Master Show Live tonight. It was terrific. You missed the episode or want to see it again, it's right here for you on our YouTube channel. Check it out. There she is again. Thanks to Judy Norton for all of her time and attention tonight. And uh, we had a, a great time with her. Tomorrow, another television legend from the sitcom, Happy Days, Marion Ross is with us tomorrow with her son as well, Jim, who's an extraordinary impressionist, vocalist, singer, and so much more. They are both, mom and son, are gonna be with us, Marion and Jim. Marion Ross, of course, legendary, uh, television veteran, uh, known for many, many different things that she's performed in, but of course, most notably as Mrs. Cunningham in the uh, 1970s sitcom on ABC television network, Happy Days with Tom Bosley and Don Most and uh, Aaron Moriarty and uh, all the rest, um, Ron Howard and, um, oh boy, so many people, um, I'd say, yeah, of course, Anson Williams, who was a guest on our show as well, and Henry Winkler, who was uh, the Fonz. <laughs> Marion Ross, she's with us tomorrow night. Now, if you're watching this late, like six months from now, that will have already occurred. So you could just uh, scan through our episodes and you can see the episode. Then on Wednesday, as we're celebrating some of these television legends, we have Charlotte Stewart, who played Miss Beadle, on Little House in the Prairie. She's going to be with us on Wednesday night. And she wrote this amazing book, Little House in the Hollywood Hills. It's a very riveting and eye-opening story about her life um, off camera. And she's going to be with us on Wednesday. There is a close-up of the book, Little House in the Hollywood Hills. It's going to be an amazing conversation. There she is on the left as Miss Beetle in Little House. There she is today. She was also on Twin Peaks, the series on ABC. She's going to be with us as well. On Thursday, brilliant singer, recording artist, and performer Brett Pruneau, who's a 
great friend of mine. He's going to be with us live. Great music and so much more. That is coming up on uh, Thursday. We're looking forward to that on Thursday as well. And many, many more guests coming up. Um, really, really excited about it. We also have um, the brilliant Irish soprano recording artist and originally with Celtic Woman, Alex Sharp is with us coming up on uh, Sunday. We're looking forward to that as well. It's going to be uh, quite amazing. It's going to be, that's going to be 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, which will be 7 p.m. in Ireland where she lives. That's coming up on Sunday. Uh, Maureen says Maureen is happy because the air conditioning in her house, uh, it's pretty warm and humid here now on the East Coast. Not as bad as you guys have, but um, our air conditioning has been going during the course of this whole show. Uh, she says, this has been such a wonderful show. Thank you, Jim, for the great conversation with Judy. My pleasure, Maureen. And I'm happy to that your air conditioning is back on at home. Not a place to be there in Arizona without the air conditioning now. What a terrific evening from Janet. Thank you so much, Jim. My pleasure. And continue to spread the word, everybody, about our show. Very, very appreciative of you guys being here live and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And drop a like, you know, the thumbs up sign you see underneath this episode, this video on our YouTube channel. Do that uh, if you love these episodes, because uh, YouTube loves when you do that too. It helps our show big time. So does the super chat. That helps us big time as well. Several of you, several of you have been doing that, and we thank you so very much. And uh, drop a comment. I know you like to comment live during the show as well, but drop a comment on the actual YouTube channel underneath this episode. We would love that. Yes, the hair is still long. It's all tied up in the back there, Linda. Absolutely. And very nice, Judy, from Jane in Sweden. Thank you very much. You did, Jim. Thank you very much. You did a thumbs up. You've been commenting on our YouTube channel, as has Mary Bishop, and uh, I believe Juanita, and so many others have been, and we appreciate that. Amy as well. Uh, Maureen says, years ago, I went on the Universal Tour Studio. Part of that was getting to see the Walton's Mountain. Pretty cool stuff. Happy birthday again to uh, Linda O'Dell watching in Jacksonville, Florida. We wish you a very happy birthday. And maybe over the weekend, um, we'll sing a happy birthday to you as well. That would be great. But I hope you're having a wonderful day and you're having a terrific birthday. Linda, who's been with us for a long time on our show. And, uh, and says good night, and you uh, have a good night as well. Sherry says, thank you, Jim, and Judy, enjoy the evening. And thanks to all of you as well for watching this episode. We're back tomorrow night with Marion Ross from Happy Days. It's going to be amazing. And then again on Wednesday, yes, Charlotte Stewart from Little House on the Prairie and Twin Peaks. Some of your television favorites are joining us here back-to-back -back on uh, the Jim Master Show Live. Jim Master Show Live generally here, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, seven days a week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love that. It's the channel you're watching right now. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our live episodes, plus our surprise pop-up show. And I just want to let you know, gang, there's going to be a pop-up show coming up probably this week. That's right. That's one of our host viewer lovity chats. So uh, look for that. Uh, it'll be a surprise, but probably a pop-up show, which is due about now. We're going to be doing this week towards the latter part of the week, towards the end of the week. All right, gang? So just letting you know, uh, look out for a surprise. I won't say the day, then it won't be a surprise. <laughs> look for a surprise pop-up show. That's Those are always a lot of fun. That's where we get to chat. We have a, a lot of fun together. If you missed the episode, any parts of this episode or any of our over 400 episodes of the Gym Master Show Love Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, there you go, 24-7, 365. You can see them all right here. Share the links. Tell everybody about our series. We would absolutely love that. And don't forget, gang, as we always say, um, put a smile on your face. It's a really cool thing to do that. Oh, yeah, there's Alex Sharp. Alex Sharp is going to be with us uh, on Sunday. Again, she was uh, with Celtic Woman. She's a brilliant Irish soprano. She's amazing. And there she is again. You could see that on our YouTube channel, uh, the link for that. 
It's going to be uh, really, really cool. And so many other guests we have coming up. Uh, we're so looking forward to uh, to all the guests. We have brilliant musician and uh, music journalist Paul Zoll is going to be with us on Friday. He's going to perform live. Again, he's a brilliant songwriter, musician, guitarist, and he's also senior editor of Songwriter Magazine. He's with us this Friday. That's going to be real cool. And as I mentioned, recording artist Brett Pruneau is with us on Thursday and so many others. You can see them all on our YouTube channel. Uh, the previews for all of them are there for you right now. Don't forget to smile, gang, and don't forget to share the levity. We say that on every episode of our series. And also find your Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends and tennis and cycling, which I love doing, writing, music. But I love the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, and uh, just being near the ocean. We live here just a couple blocks from the ocean on the coast in uh, the United States between, uh, well, in the greater New York area, actually, along the southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And it's beautiful. And my work in television, radio, stage, and film, on air, on camera, behind the scenes, all of it is another Zen place for me as well. So find your Zen place. And one more thing we do before we go, don't forget to relax, breathe, take some time for yourself, love one another and love yourself. Everybody's welcome to join us here. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, uh, your height, your weight, uh, it doesn't matter your eye color, political views, religious views, none of that matters. You're all welcome to join us right here at home on the Gym Master Show Live. Gang, thanks for being with us. We're going to wrap up a wonderful show again with Judy Norton, and we thank her for being with us. And we thank all of you, whether you're watching live or you're watching this later. Those of you that watch this in the archives, we thank you very much as well. Looking forward to that. Happy Days was on TV there. It's going to be tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. All right. You guys are the best. Tight, lovely hogs to all. Have a peaceful rest of your day. May your dreams be sweet. You too, with air conditioning. <laughs> Hugs to everybody, and you get the biggest hug, Jim. Thank you very much. Right back at you, Jane in Sweden. What a terrific evening. Thank you so much, Jim. My pleasure, my pleasure. Gang, you're the best. The loveties right here on the Gym Master Show Live. You take care. You be well. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day, regardless of what time it is. We'll catch you on the next one. Then the next one, the next one. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of talking lately. We'll catch you on the next one. We always have a fun time on this show. Catch you on the next one. We call this the Gym Master Show Live. I'm Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time till next time. Yeah, good comments. Comments are still rolling in. Post some on our uh, YouTube channel too and give us a thumbs up. All right, gang, we're going to wrap up. We love you all. Take care. Have a good rest of your day and good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Marion Ross from Happy Days right here on the Gym Master Show Live. Good night. Mm -hmm.